Whoop that! Whoa, oh wait, okay, okay, no, 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 no. Uh, the song is over. Oh my goodness! Uh, you're back, my European brother. Now uh, it's Mr. Young, by the way. And it's foreign in the building with the low voice. You know, my voice is uh, improved since the last time we talked, but my yes. God, my body clock has it, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we got to talk about your big Euro tour, just like the WWE, just like TKO. Yeah. Our boy foreign has been touring Europe, man. How are you doing, yeah. buddy? Uh, I love it. I love it. But it's like, it's a case of missed opportunity, bro. You know what I mean? Like, like okay. I was I was in London. I was on this in London on the same weekend as the UEFA Champions League finals uh, uh. but then I had to fly off to Germany so I missed the <laughs> FA Cup finals there you know I could have been at Wembley if I wanted to or like walk around the area right and then when I was in uh, when I was the, the week after it was the Champions League finals mm. but it was also in Wembley in London but by oh. that time I'm already in Germany already right you know I mean? right right, yeah. right. And, and then I was in Germany for like a few days mm. but then I was there a week ahead too early because the Euro 2024 championships <laughs> were in Germany. So I'm like, ah, la, la. Uh, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's okay. The vacation was not uh-huh. for you. It was for you and the people you love. Yeah, ah, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. we can't always have what we want, but that's okay because we got what we need. Spoken from true experience, Mr. Young. Heck so yeah. many times must compromise huh, with the oh, partner. Yeah. <laughs> cannot complain. Like, cannot complain. At the end of the day, you know what? You, you got to give some, you got to take some. Yeah, it's it, life. That's life, right? It's true. It's true. I, I also heard from one of our listeners, right? Gaddafi. Mm. Isn't he apparently going to be in Scotland and Correct. Glasgow to watch Clash at the Castle? That's what I heard as well. So, oh um, my God. He's going to have a lot of fun. You know, yeah, yeah. And we'll uh, be talking about Clash at the Castle as well, right? Huh? Absolutely. You know what? I'm gonna do this upcoming uh, Sunday, twelve midnight. I'm gonna do a live stream. Watch along. Nice. So if you want to come, uh, watch Clash at the Castle, Scotland with me, twelve midnight to three a.m. I think I should be able to stay up, lah. Should be, lah. Gotcha. No problem, lah. I I think maybe my body clock still will allow me to <laughs> be on your time. So I think it should be fine. Bro, <laughs> you on that Europe time, so can bro, can you just like for one week, uh, Don't fix your sleep schedule. Bro, but Euro time is damn short, you know. Like, okay, ah. so if it's like twelve p.m. or no, twelve a.m. here in Singapore time, right? Yeah. It's only six p.m. over there, so it's just about ah. to be dinner oh. time. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's catch up and say hello to all the wonderful people in chat. By the way, it's good to be back doing the live thing as well. Saleh, what's up? Diff Royalty, Jason, how y'all doing? Feel free nice. to say hi if you are hanging out in the chat as well. We'd love to see you. And as always, uh, if you haven't already joined us on the Discord, link is in the description. And also, we, we have a Patreon line, in case you didn't know. You're like, ah, I love these two guys and their take on wrestling, their take on life. In fact, you want to support us, take it to mm. the next level, head to our Patreon page. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, mm. Even on my European holiday, I remember got this one guy. I won't say names. Lah. Uh. He DM me. He's like, hey, yo, for, you know, I, I understand you're on holiday. I appreciate it. Uh, but... Can I get the kick to the gut mug or not? I want to ah. buy the mug. <laughs> and I told him, you know, very nicely. I said, okay, you have to be a kick to the gut champion member tier. Mm. Then you can get free merch and all that. Then he said, I'll, I'll think about it. Lah, but can I buy the mug first or not? I want to oh, <laughs> right, right. So yeah, so so I I, I kind I think I've made it an edict that, you know, if you guys want to purchase our merch, mm. uh, we will strongly encourage you guys to be part of our kick to the gut championship tier. Yeah. But you just want to buy specific merch while you die, die, uh, see the mug. You want to own that mug, be part of our kick to the gut community. No problem. You can buy it directly yes you can dm your boys on kick to the guts instagram and they will name the price mm. everybody's got a price for the million dollar bag <laughs> and here's but the like, thing right it's yeah. it's not just a pie sweet thing no i actually use it i show you dirty dirty inside my tray ah i use yeah, i yeah. actually use this mug and i can confirm the hardiness of this mug i've been using Legit. it every morning for my tray nice appreciate it brother the quality is there uh, you know what? <laughs> we 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 will only charge you for the shipping because we ship, shipping this thing for overseas. I uh, don't play play. Ah, uh, these are legit quality. Uh. <laughs> so you know what? If you guys are interested, let us know. But thank you so much for being a Patreon member. Uh, mm. we also have some new members. Uh, Mister, I don't know whether you've yes. seen it while I was away. Uh, uh our uh, we got a uh, statement uh, who's a yes. member now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, statement Andrew Tang. He's going to be somewhere on the scroller in just a little while. Um, want to just basically say thank you so very much for all of you helping us pursue our dreams. I know you love wrestling. We love wrestling. You love us talking shit about wrestling and talking mm-hmm. about the good stuff. Also, it's not just talking shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, Let's be real. Sure. Just sure, we're, we're spreading the love for pro wrestling. 
Yeah, man. I mean, with whatever you guys are supporting, this will really, really, really help us keep doing this yeah, uh, on yeah, a yeah. on a permanent basis, essentially. Because we are not just doing this like atas yeah. atas cakcau. <laughs> We're really making it consistent. You know why? Because we do have sponsors as well. So that's right. This is legit, legit uh, operation. I mean, half to- legit, lah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking about that, hey, don't say stuff like that when we're talking about our sponsors, ah. Uh. Okay, oh, yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. We're, we're we're joking, of course. Uh, let's give a shout out to Mirage Advisory for helping support our dreams to do what we love, and that's talk about wrestling. They are the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Go check them out, and if you haven't already, ayo. You know, they are helping us, so let's help them back, right? Let's drop them a follow on the Instagram page right here. Yeah, man. Oh, word, word on the street is that they are interested in going to check out Dual Destinies. Just saying, Ooh, just saying, okay. Grapple so, Max. So, yeah. Uh, you, you saw them in an episode of the podcast a couple of weeks ago on our YouTube page. They were at mm-hmm. the SPW event. They had so much fun. It yep. was, I think we need to do more stuff like that as well. This sort of an impromptu, you know, and that quote unquote yeah. nonsense with some of the wrestlers. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, if you really like our post show style, you know, we'll, we'll do more of it. We do our Destinies could be another opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we might even you know engage some of our our peeps, our community. Uh, can you guys want to see like Dave or you know, Saleh doing more interviews? Let us know as well. <laughs> more than happy. On, only if Saleh wears his backpack. He is oh, now yeah, backpack yeah, yeah. boy to me. Correct, the backpack intern. <laughs> oh my god, we need a round two between Saleh and Kelvin, right on the mic, and then <laughs> the later intense. on in the ring. <laughs> hey, don't, don't so bad lah. Huh? He he might have taken the L lah, Saleh from Kelvin the last time. A poor fella lah, poor fella. See, you know what we need or not from Saleh? We need like uh, a training montage, bro. Yes. You go, go in training, we do training montage for him. Ah, then round oh two with God, Calvin. Yeah. Let's see. But you, but you know what we, What will be the case? I think Miraj and Vajra will be happy, happy, happy mm. to support that uh, particular challenge and not just our challenge, the community <laughs> of wrestling as well, trying to get it back to Miraj and Vajra. <laughs> Absolutely. So once again, yeah. thank you so much, uh, Miraj, for helping us do what we love to do. Once again, guys, go check out their content. It's really awesome. And uh, yeah, they support us as you support us as well and we appreciate it all. Yes, please follow them on their social media. And I know for some reason, if you guys been watching this and you guys see their stuff and you haven't followed, I don't understand why not. Just mm. follow them on their social media. That will really, really help their stuff and boost their profile. And yeah, they will continue supporting the podcast. So let's Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Hey, talking about support, I mean, very quickly, I know we didn't put it in the title or anything like that, right? But can Mm-mm. we talk about Dante Chen and how yes. this upcoming NXT episode we are mm. going to see the return of something we haven't seen in a while because, you know, I guess it hasn't been very PR, right? Mm. You know, they moved it away from calling it a Singapore cane, but because now we have a Singapore-born wrestler, they're like, all right, let's 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 bring the name back. A Singapore cane match. Yeah, man. I mean, it's bound to happen. Right? Come on. <laughs> let's... The moment Dante Chen signed with WWE, I know, okay, I tell you, one time got this, we got to be the one feud. He's going to have a blow-off match. It's going to be a Singapore cane match. Okay, it's so inevitable. the thing about this whole feud is, and um, I'm not going to lie, right? You, you know, I haven't been watching too much NXT. Um, yep. The whole Dante Chen thing made me watch NXT again. Yep, and yep. I, I'm actually glad that they are using Robert Stone a little bit more as well. He's sort of like the assistant to Ava. Mm, yes, uh, yes, bit. I've heard about it. Yeah, you, you know, so he's kind of there, and he was the one who, quote unquote, gave Dante the chance, the shot, you know, uh, that led to him beating Lexus, K- eh? uh, Lexus, Lexus King, King. twice, yeah. twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the thing about Robert Stone is very he does share some history with Dante Chen because I think after the first appearance, they mm. both said very complimentary things about yes. each other yes. on social media, talking about how he actually, you know, gave him a chance or noticed his uh, work ethic. So. Mm. It kind of like, you know, gives evidence to everything that we've already assumed. Mm. Everyone backstage, everyone in the locker room loves Dante Chen, thinks, you know, he's a stand-up guy, he's putting in the work. But what he just needs is an opportunity. And I tell you, right now, he needs to grab this opportunity with both yeah. hands, man. Legit. Yeah. Um, so also, <laughs> I know this is a very random and minor thing, but, uh, you know, he actually cut a really good promo on NXT, right? I'm like, mm. do I detect a hint of an American accent coming out uh, in the, uh, uh, Dante now? Of course. I mean, he's been there, what, three years? So yeah, a bit of code switching, but that's fine. You know, it's for their audience, so it makes sense, right? But I, I, I do hear a little bit of the Singapore in there as well, so I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, fine he, with that. He can't la-la, Simo, yeah. or, or he can't, he can't he do all those... <laughs> 
What do you, what do you call it? Uh, C, oh, C bay, you know, C oh. bay. No, 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 no. I'm terrible. <laughs> what? One thing my girlfriend can confirm, I'm terrible at accent. I tell you, when I, when I was in Euro and trying mm. to code switch, right? Mm. So I, you know, I pretended to speak a bit like a German accent or like I will just, in Switzerland, I will just say mercy, you know, that kind of shit. And then my but girlfriend is, wait, wait, mercy? You know, it's supposed to be thank you. You mean mercy? Mercy, yeah, mercy, yes. yeah, mercy, total mercy, <laughs> not mercy, mercy, I know. bro. So I, go the, I go to the cafe and then they say, oh, there'll be, five, you know, five euros. Ah, mercy, mercy. And then my girlfriend <laughs> slapped me on the shoulder. <laughs> and say, what are you begging for? Why are you begging for mercy, ah? Oh, like, and then the, the, the lady walked away and she slept and she was like, can you not make fun of the accident? You'll kill us, you know. <laughs> what like, okay, nah, I give um, up, I give up. W- okay, so let's uh, jump back to old Dante, right? What do you think of this? I mean, he's very much a white meat baby face, happy to be here. Yeah. I've worked so hard, you know? Yeah, no. is, is that something that um, you think will have legs in the future? Bro, he is right now in his uh, Rocky My Via face. Mm. Let's be honest, right? Mm-hmm. He's, he's the Dominic... Mysterio white meat baby face just debut face. Yes, yes. He will have to develop an age or some wrinkle in his character very, very much. So I mean if he's gonna go down the motor combat route, like because some assassin maybe he can lean into that, I don't know. <laughs> but uh he the thing he does have going for him is he can be a good communicator. Mm. He he yes. and that promo that he did that mothership picked up, oh man, like, I got goosebumps like holy shit. Woo. Yeah. Okay. So we uh, we can rely on the WWE production, you know, to yeah. level that him up like, at least okay. in the presentation. My question is then have they have they um fast forwarded his th- th- this quote unquote feud a little bit too fast? And let's not forget, he's already picked up two wins over Lexus King, right? Yeah. If you want 50 if 50 50 booking is something that you believe in, then mm-hmm. he has to lose his own quote unquote his own match, no? Yes, but then if Lexis King were to win this match, mm. I, I can't foresee him beating Dante clean as well because in the two matches, Le- Lexis didn't really dominate Dante. It's still nope. like a 50 50 match. So I think it's almost as if they're using Lexis King to bring up Dante to a level of noto- notoriety. Yeah. Uh, so I think if nothing else, this will actually benefit both people. But I do not know how Lexis is going to bounce back from this mm. lah because yeah, everyone so it, thought of Dante as a jobber, right? Up yeah. to this point. So that, that's my whole argument, right? Like, I don't see a way that they book Dante to win here, clean, whatever, because that mm. would just make Lexus King look bad. Like, because he's literally yeah. lost twice already. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He might, he might steal the dirty win, I what, guess. But it's, but it's a Singapore Kane match. There is no dirty in a match where there are no rules. Okay, so that's the thing, right? If... If Lexus were to beat Dante violently with the mm. Singapore King, then that will completely depush whatever they're doing with Dante right now. Yeah. So I feel Dante might get all three wins decisively uh-huh. and then Lexus need to separate. So I think they're making a quick feud to kind of establish Dante and then Lexus will go away uh, go and do something else. I don't I, know. Maybe. I, see, I don't know about that because like I said, I feel like that does Lexus dirty. I mean, I love it for Dante, but it does do dirty. I, I, unless Lexus can make an excuse like, oh, this is your match because you're from Singapore. Like, I don't know. Some, you, you know what I mean? It's like, mm, it's yeah. like, Edge having a chair match is like his match. Or the Hardys having a tables, uh, ladders match is their match, quote-unquote, you know? Yeah, yeah. it could be their specialty match. Right? It could be like Triple H never losing a Hell in a Cell anti-Batista, of course. So right. I, I am counting on that. And it's it was so interesting that this was on a normal, regular NXT mm. episode, not NXT Battleground, which just occurred. Yeah. Which also is, again, one of those things where I'm like, have they fast-tracked this feud to its conclusion like super fast within three weeks? Just to give Dante that, you know, like, all right, this is a, a, a new guy and we want to legitimize him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I think, I think, this is my mm. theory. Like, you know, recently there's a lot of call-ups, right? Because yep. of the draft. You got Carmelo ah. Hayes, people leaving up. They they, they, need, they need, they got no choice. They have people on this, in the background the last three years. Okay, they need to give them an opportunity now. It's yep. a sing and swing for them. And this is Dante's opportunity. So, to fill up the gaps that's been left behind on mm. the roster. I, I think it's a good thing because like, okay. yeah, they're giving him a mini feud. They are not, to me, they are not pushing him too much because yep. even though, yes, this is a short feud, but then he can move on to other things and then mm. build to the next big PLE right. for NXT. Mm. Fair point, fair point. I, I want to point out what Div Royalty said because I had it in my mind as well. I wanted to bring up, right? Mm. Every time I see Lexus King cut a promo, I can't mm. help but stare at his beard. Like, how, <laughs> how perfect is his beard? And Div Royalty asks... 
Does Lexus <laughs> King's beard look like it's been filled in with a marker? Yes, I also <laughs> have noticed this. I don't know if you noticed this. It's like, how is it so perfectly shaved? It yeah. looks like it's been drawn in with a marker or a template. Maybe backstage he has a literally like a template that he like, you know, he fills it in. I like, what is going on? Bro, he looked like sporty Ken, you know, like Ken and Barbie. Oh, he looked right. like he like, like the way he's drawn is like very too well manicured also, yeah, it, which I thought it was fake. It's, it's too perfect. How, how does he do it? Like that is the most important question I need the answer to right now. Bro, it's not just his, his freaking beard, bro. His teeth is so perfect oh. as well. Have you seen his teeth? Well, that one, of course, that one we all know. La. You can right, get right, the right. nails, that kind of thing, whatever. Yeah, la. Bro, bro, I, we are complimenting Lexus King way too much for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Dante, bro. Dante is yeah, the man. Okay, we, yeah, we can't help but be biased on this one. Huh? So yeah, yeah. um. You know what? It just means that they're giving him a shot and that is exciting times for, yeah, yeah. Uh, for us here in Singapore as we root for Dante. And yes, like you yeah. alluded to earlier, Mothership has been featuring uh, Dante Chen like crazy and it's always the same comments but let's not focus on it because of... You know what I mean. Yeah. The man no, wanna... who... Sh- the, the jackass who shall not be named. Yeah, I don't even want to focus on the comments because we know what to expect, right? Yeah, yeah. But I want to focus on what Mothership did because Mothership literally, <laughs> right... They've been putting so much about Dante Chen, and I literally saw them rip an entire like Promo. backstage fight. Remember oh yeah, the yeah. backstage fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they 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 recorded or screen recorded the whole two minutes and put it on Mothership, <laughs> and then they pull it down, bro. Did they get flagged? I believe WWE might have flagged Mothership. <laughs> okay lah, it's like you put 20, 10 seconds is okay lah. I don't put the whole damn segment lah. Yeah, okay, okay. Bodo. Mothership. I, I know you are new to this WWE game. I recently <laughs> been posting a lot of that shit. But one thing you should know about WWE is you do not screen record the entire segment and put it on social media. You're going to get flagged. We've done to, it before. Yes, to, we know. To be fair, yep. AEW is worse. I don't know oh, if yeah, you yeah, noticed yeah. this. There is so much less AEW content out there because they are very litigious with this stuff. Well, like, I mean, WWE is smart enough to let a lot of the segments go as long as you don't play the whole goddamn segment by itself yeah. without yeah. somebody's face there. Like their yeah. algorithm... Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Can hear you. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that was wait, a, wait, wait, Were you not... scared? I was, too si- I was too frozen. Or yeah, something. yeah. I was like, whoa, bro. Did, did we freeze right there? Were no, you no, doing a Batista? You know, uh, not Batista. Drax. Oh, I'm no, very no. I'm still... good. I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm holding in my form because of what happened before the podcast started. So I, I <laughs> I'm not, not going to move, man. Okay, uh, technical bro. issues? No, that has never happened on this podcast before. Uh, yeah, live. Uh, nothing, can, nothing can go wrong when it goes live. Uh, you know, uh, okay, so okay. so uh, that aside, I think yeah. NXT is in an exciting place. It's in a... To me, and we will talk more about it in a bit because we're going to review Battleground, right? It's. Yep. Uh, I feel like it's in a state of flux right now, but we'll get to that. And we'll also get to the preview of WWE Clash at the Castle. But before we do that, of course, ah, we have something else to um, shout out and, and, and talk about. I'll let you take the lead on this one, my guy yes. foreign. But oh, sure. we want to give a shout out to Lemak once again. Yo, Lemak is back and Lemak is back for good, you know. Uh, you know, they kind of test run, uh, you know, partnering with us and uh, they love hearing us promote their product, mm. promote their brand promote their stalls so yes. now they're back and they wanted to let us know hey guys mm. we've got a new pop-up store oh. in arab street bro okay because, okay because people were saying like hey you know we wanted to go for the expo event but it was only like just one weekend yeah now yeah. you guys got no excuse right lemma mm. is they're having a permanent store at arab street nice. so you guys can go down during lunchtime if you guys work around cbd area work mm-hmm. around boogies area or after work, you are hanging around at Boogie Street because I know a bunch of you guys love chilling, chilling over there in KGC and all that kind of shit. Yep. Come and go check out Lema, get their pop-up stuff, get their Jongkong, bro. I would yeah. love their Jongkong. Yes. Check out, you, you, you can like order from them, you can check out their stalls as well, like uh, Foreign mentioned. And of course, go and follow them on their social media so that you know, you know where and when exactly they're doing their pop-ups, what kind of promos and deals that they have, right? It's lemak.lemak on Instagram. Drop them a follow and all their other socials. You can just click on their little link thing here. You see, it'll take you to all their different platforms. Yeah, man. And uh, don't forget, guys, once hmm. you have a taste of lemak, oh, it will be a taste to remember, bro. Ah, uh, yes. So enjoy yes, it. Enjoy yes. So, it. 
Once again, yes, a uh, shout out to Lamar, and it's a perfect time to talk about Lamar because, you know, it's lunchtime right now. So I don't know about you, bro, but that, that picture made me super hungry. Let me show you it again. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, let's power through this podcast because I was uh, so hungry. I have to eat bro, really. <laughs> I, I, I don't usually quote this fella, but I'm going to quote right back right now. Feed me more. <laughs> Feed me more. Uh, yeah, well, once again, guys, uh, go check, check them out. Lamar on Instagram, Lamar on TikTok. They just started a TikTok account. Ooh. And apparently, if you want to order food or get some of their products, especially they also have uh, flavored coffee beans as well that they yeah. sell. You all can buy it from their TikTok store, bro. So like, oh. hey, they are like us. They are full of multi-platform opportunities to interact with them. You know what I mean? Feed so, me more. Okay, come. Let's feed you more of that uh, wrestling content right now. And let's talk yeah. about NXT Battleground. Okay. I guess if this was the purpose, they succeeded. Because mm-hmm. to be honest, like I told you, right? If not for the Dante Chen stuff, I was kind of like, eh, with the NXT product right now. Yeah, It's not... 2.0 level of, I don't want to watch, but it hasn't hit the black and gold era. You know what I mean? I feel like this yeah. is an era in flux. A large part because, like we talked about, a lot of the guys have been called up already, right? Like you you got your Carmelo Hayes, who, let's very quickly talk about Carmelo Hayes right now. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think he's doing on SmackDown? Not good. <laughs> It's, it's one of those things, right? Like, uh, you see him doing so well on NXT and you're like, all right, he's a finished product, he's ready. And then when you have him there live with LA Knight, arguably one of the best promos, he looks tiny and he he, he just looks incomplete. You know what no, I mean? And and, and mm. you see what happened on the during the promo itself? Yes, yes. He said the wrong name. He, he literally flopped. said... Yeah, he flopped. He said like LA, and then LA Knight... Instantly, because he's the professional that he is, right? He's like, yeah. well, well I, I have to look at the mirror for that to happen or some shit like that. So he immediately yeah, picked up on it. And Carmelo, I don't know if he was nervous, he was a little bit green, but he either didn't realize the flub or yeah. he didn't know how to react to LA yeah, Knight's flub. live reaction to his mm. flub. So everything, yeah. it just was awkward. He just died, 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 a, died a painful death. Yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as that. Oh, was it? Who was it, huh? Uh, Callisto, <laughs> we love Callisto, but yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I uh, do uh, lucha uh, things? Lucha things, lucha things. <laughs> it's yes, not as bad I, as the lucha things promo, but oof, I like I I literally felt like oh shit, he he kind of wasted an opportunity there, yeah, you know. Yeah. And the the problem is right. We I've always compared uh, Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes together. Like, I always thought that like, their careers is gonna be always gonna be on the same parallel trajectory. Mm. But this took a way turn. I mean, I mean, like I think from that, Carmelo's all the way back down, and like we yeah. got, you know, Braun Breaker on the other hand is like but, just all the way up, you know. But you see, there are very different types of characters you portray. Like yep. Braun Breaker is Goldberg. You portray him like Goldberg. He comes in, destroys, he leaves. He's not there cutting two minute promos. Carmelo was always the guy cutting promos, but now for whatever reason. I guess you take him big fish, small pond. Now you put him in a big ocean. Ugh, he's getting swallowed up a little bit. I'm not saying we are down on him by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's going to take time and maybe he'll need two, three years uh, before he actually gets to that main event level or that main roster level. But we've yeah. also seen people we thought were going to be amazing just kind of, you know, just fade into the undercut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Cameron Grimes, case in point, oh. right? R- yeah. But okay, like for me, I feel like Cameron Grimes, they didn't even give him an opportunity. He was mm. only in like sort of like lower mid card feuds. He was playing the jobber role on the main yeah, card. Yeah. They never actually gave him an opportunity to do his gra- like whatever his like you know his weird like I I don't even know how to describe. I thought his NXT gimmick was so unique. Like he's yeah. this hairy chested weirdo, right? <laughs> and and it just never manifested. In, he he wasn't even given a chance with yeah. Carmelo Hayes. The first match he had was with Cody. And then he's now with LA Knight. You know, like, they've given him a lot of chances. And unfortunately, I feel like maybe he fumbled it a little bit. I, I think it's a crisis of confidence, like, to be honest. Mm. Maybe he suddenly realized, oh, shit, like, I'm on the main roster. This is going to be a big deal for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can't blame him, though, right? Like, nope. he really is in the land of the Giants. And he got yeah. a swim. He's got a he swim. He's got a swim. Um. Yeah. Also, talking about Giants, I know we keep side-checking from Battleground, but yeah, what, man. <laughs> what do you make of this whole thing that has quote-unquote leaked about Ricochet not re-signing with the WWE? Do you think this is a legit <laughs> thing? Do you think he is working? Mm-hmm. Or the, maybe Triple H is like, okay, okay, come, you leak it out like this and then we work the crowd. 
Okay, the thing is, internet audience. The, yeah. the thing is, like, even though people say, yeah, it's on the internet, it might not be true. Mm. But the sources are legitimate, right? I trust Fightful, like Fightful Select. I trust what? my life with him. Wow, wow, wow. That's the thing. What I'm saying is, maybe WWE have become a lot smarter with what gets leaked and they purposely leak things to, you, you know what I mean? I feel like yeah. we've reached that era where, like, you know, like, okay, CM Punk is a master of the shit, right? Mm-mm. You know, he'll drop enough clues and whether something is or is not is a half-truth, he'll leak it so that when it happens, ah, I meant to do it. If it doesn't happen, yeah. oh, you're just freaking guessing only. Yeah. Put it this way, la. we mm. are internet fans speculating. So yeah. we will never know the truth, right? No. We'll never know the truth until yeah. what, what, when the thing actually happens, right? But say this is legit- legitimately happening. Like he mm. really told WWE he's not going to renew and maybe WWE re- leaked it so that they can justify themselves for not booking Ricochet perhaps yeah, or booking him sure. to shit right yeah. on this way out I don't think it's a bad move because can we be honest <laughs> Ricochet has hit his ceiling in WWE like what else can he do beyond the mid cut level bro he's the inaugural speed champion okay don't play play <laughs> bro <laughs> You know who's seven the... champion also got more prestige right this point bro, in time bro you know who's the next uh, the current the new speed champion Andrade, right? Andrade. And another fella who made a big comeback and then like, what is he doing now? A speed champion, of course. Oh. <laughs> um, look, so obviously the next guess or the next place he could go is AEW, right? And I mean, yep. what, well, are they going to do the Osprey um, Ricochet special part two? Maybe. they can. We, re- at least they have a promotion that apparently celebrates this kind of sport fest, right? Come on. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen that match before and like... For the people who like that kind of stuff, I guess maybe AEW would be the perfect place for Ricochet to go. Lah. You know, they'll have their mm. spot fest, everything will look very cooperative and choreographed, but it's visually exciting. Yeah. Do you, okay, do you know when I realized like, okay, Ricochet will forever have a ceiling in WWE? Uh. Remember he had that, that one feud, was it last year SummerSlam against Logan Paul? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it went nowhere. Even nowhere is yeah. one thing. It's but like they really highlighted the disparity in the promo abilities between oh. Logan Paul and Ricochet. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, Ricochet, you've been in this business how long? Mm-hmm. Logan Paul been been in this business how long? Well, how come this fella got more charisma than you? you because know what I mean? it's Logan Paul. It's one of those innate things, right? The X factor. Like, yeah, we've all that's a that's a tough example though, because Logan Paul, like we've talked about, he is an anomaly. He is yep. both He's grasped the physical thing. I think the promo thing he's always had because he's a YouTuber, right? He's honed that in his other endeavors. Like him or hate him, and it's very easy to hate him. That's what makes him a great heel. He already has that. He knows how to market himself and be a douchebag, yeah. right? And yeah, Ricochet was focusing too much on the flippy shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think that is an issue for 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 for, rest, for a wrestler, you know, mm. to focus more on their strengths and all that. But what I'm saying is specifically for WWE, yeah. I've never seen a WWE main eventer who is just like a Dean Malenko, like oh, just all skills but no ability to talk. And let's be honest, Ricochet will never be a main <laughs> eventer in his current form. Right, yeah, r- right. True, Bret Hart, bro. I mean, I don't know. No, 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 I'm, I'm, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. no, no. Bret Hart no, has some great no, promo. No. Okay, I would rank like Bret Hart like uh, maybe a six out of ten in terms of promo. Yeah, yeah. Like it's possible, it's possible, but he makes up for it with his incredible in ring skill, right? Yeah, but th- even then, right? I think Bret Hart can carry a high level feud. Yeah. He yeah. can be a cranky asshole as a heel. <laughs> he, he can be that, you know, that uh, we look up role model guy. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's, he's a bit boring, but mm. you can f- feel his honesty the way he yeah. delivers his promo. I don't feel anything when Ricochet talks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just feel, I'm just feeling Samantha Irvin. Like, oh, oh, oh. Geez, yeah. so, well, so, but, so, is it just a booking thing? Like, book him like a superhero. He doesn't talk that much. He just shows up, does crazy moves. But, yeah lah. Like, there is a ceiling to that. Like, I absolutely agree. But if that. they wanted to do that, they should have done it from the very beginning and like stayed on that. But they were never consistent with Ricochet. That's a problem. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, well, maybe it is one of those things where it's good for him to go away for a while, learn yeah. some new stuff. Maybe he finds a whole new side of himself and then comes back five years later. Maybe, you know, we've seen that happen before as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe, Drew, he, maybe he's betting on, betting on himself, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see that as an issue. So, go to AEW, go to New Japan, go do yeah. all that stuff come back more decorated than ever. Then maybe he might develop some promo abilities because yeah. there's no restrictions on the mic, right? Ah. Give me five minutes. Let me talk. 
I don't know he, about that, but okay. <laughs> then, then he become Carmelo H. He just repeat the bad guy's name. Oh, my oh God. no. Yeah. Um, okay, I know we're supposed to talk about Battleground, but very quickly Oh, my God, well. Mr. Very Young, what quick... is it? What else do you want to talk about? Have you watched <laughs> any AEW? Have you paid attention? Because I have not. I've like, like, okay, I'm done. And it's that's the thing about AEW. It's so easy to just, okay, I don't watch. And yeah. it, I don't feel bad about it, you know? Yeah, I I not say I don't watch it, but mm. I somebody's back. So, you know, MJF is back. So, I, I'm going to watch his, just his segments, especially. Has he uh, returned? As I know after the pay-per-view, they skipped him one week, which was a, such a stupid idea, by the way. I don't mm-hmm. understand why they didn't just play a promo package of him. Oh, you want to hear what I have to say? Well, on my terms only, next week. At least something. Give us a little bit mm-hmm. of a ball tease, you know. But no, they're just, oh yeah, he's back. Has he come back to do a promo yet? Yes, and you, okay. did, and you might do you miss it then, I, I, bro? Okay, life gets in the way. You get busy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. M- as much as I love MGF, unfortunately, it didn't push me to go and watch the show. So tell me what happened, bro. You will hate what they did with MGF. Bro. I think uh, you will hate it. Okay, okay, okay. Just, just tell me. Just tell me. Okay, the whole promo, maybe the first eighty percent was exciting, right? Ah, he came yeah. back, you know, he laid he laid the ground where he started shitting on all the top stars. So he. Mm. He he targeted um so Strickland, mm. he targeted uh Will Osprey, and I believe who else did he target? Uh, uh blah, 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 blah. did he talk about the elite? Who, uh, he didn't talk about the elite yet. I mean huh. I mean he he was it Jungle Boy? Shit! Okay, now it's not as memorable memorable as I remembered. But mm. he did target three of the top stars just to lay the groundwork that okay, he's gonna go after these people. Mm. Right? And then um People were, were very excited, like, oh, okay. And then in the meantime, he said, you know what? Uh, Forbidden Door is coming out. TK is probably going to make me wrestle a bunch of, like, jobber from, you know, New, New, Japan. New Japan or Mexico, <laughs> like a one-off match. Yeah. And then it really happened, bro. Guess who? In- I tell you, you can you will never guess who interrupted MJF. Uh, and apparently going to start off a feud or, like, I'm, a mini feud. I'm guessing it's a New Japan guy? Uh, No. It's close. an AW guy. It's an AEW guy, but uh, more on the Mexican side. <laughs> oh my god, is it like El Viking, Del Kingo, Vikingo? No, no, very close. Very close. Okay, it's uh, okay. Out, of all, out of all the Mexicans, I think he has the most impressive upside. Oh, I saw Roosh. Yes, <laughs> Roosh. Bro. Where has Roosh been? El Toro Blanco. Okay. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw. I saw a clip on uh, Instagram. Now I remember. Okay. I don't hate MJF versus Rouge as a match. No, but, but... they gave <laughs> him a five minute segment where Rouge tried to interrupt MJF and talk, bro. <laughs> oh my god! You know what's the worst part? Uh. MJF actually really like praised Rouge. Like, hey, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that. You know, you're not good enough. You are actually a, a complete blah, blah. The, Even the way he butter him up, uh, he also in his mind like, ah, this guy really cannot make it. Uh, <laughs> cannot <laughs> lah. Uh, okay, so so it's a starter feud, right? Yeah. Like, it's a yeah. let's get him some wins, reestablish him. I get it. I'm fine with it, but <sighs> it's a guy who hasn't been around for a while. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, uh, okay, who cares? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not just who cares. He. You're, you're talking about MJ, your top star, you know? Yeah, yeah. So anyone that he's going to be around is going to be highlighted. Yes, correct. But can you put him against someone who can actually talk? Yeah. Who can actually, like, you know, carry up his side of the deal? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, it was so bad to hear. I was like, oh, oh my God, Rush. I know, Rush. It's like Andrade, right? Andrade mm. with his promos and his bad English. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same vibes, same vibes, man. And then, okay, so I also know, and immediately I rolled my eyes when Will Ospreay won the whatever Battle Royal Invitational... So, he is going to face Swerve. The new yeah. international champion is going to face Swerve, the AEW champion at Forbidden Door. Um, Did they just copy WWE I mean, by I making don't... the US champion the WWE sure. champion? Whatever, right? But like, is it going to be title versus title? Like, nah, what is... Nah. And, and how quickly have they killed Swerve's heat? Like, we talked about it already. Yeah. But like, yeah. now you're even like having the, the quote-unquote secondary title guy face off. Like, it, the only way this pans out is the schmoz, no? Yeah, it is terrible. I, I, okay, the thing is, like, 
Swerve, I think, unfortunately, was dead on arrival when he became champion. Mm. Or like, maybe they should have pulled the trigger on him earlier or like at Revolution maybe or something. Mm. Because by the time he won it, we were like, ah, okay lah, he's a yeah. champion, good for him, congrats. No, and then, and then, really and then he went down. He, he, yeah, exactly right. And once again, it's the booking. He wins and then the next night, he's fighting a jobber competitively. Not a jobber, but you know, a lower mid card guy. Competitive yeah. match. Like, they just, for the life of them, don't know how to book a champion or book anybody properly. Okay, I already figured out what's the Swerve issue already. Mm. Swerve lost that aura. Yeah. It's the aura of a champion, aura of like a top star. He had yeah. that for a bit when he was fighting Hangman Page. Yeah. And we were like, oh, this guy, he's the next big thing, right? Mm. But they never... Okay, this is not just his, his work alone, you know. The company needs to help yeah. him present that aura. Look at Solo Sequa right now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay, for all his flaws as the new tribal chief, but you can see the WWE making yeah. a concerted effort to yes. make his aura and mystique level yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, look, doing it with AEW. Because AEW is only concerned with one storyline right now, and that's EVPs. Like, uh, And we've talked about it at nauseum. The least charismatic, the least important people are the main focus of that show. So ah, mm. uh, you just reminded me who he talked shit about. Okada was the third guy. Oh, he was saying like Okada. Okay. But that's a, again, right? Like, you're talking about Okada in AEW, which is, yes, he's funny or he's trying to be humorous and all that. I can, I can understand that. But man, this is the wrong way to put him on yeah. wrong people to associate him with, man. I'd rather Okada stand alone. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, he would have had the aura. Still. I think the only person so far that they've kind of like, you know, who has succeeded despite the booking, in spite of all the nonsense Tony Khan does, is Will Ospreay. He's yep. organically gotten the crowd support. It's just a matter of when he gets buried or when the uh, the booking fails him. Yeah. Okay, Will Ospreay still has the aura. Mm. In a weird way, I still feel Mercedes Monet has some sort of aura sure. still. Sure. It's just that every time she opens her mouth, like the aura <laughs> gets sipped away, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, no, the funny thing, we've talked about it before, right? Literally, Willow Nightingale was on the cusp of having that aura. Yes. And they cut the legs off. Now yeah. she's in a feud with um, Stat uh, Chris Statlander. And Chris Statlander, another one who has so much potential. Imagine Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale in NXT or in WWE Ooh. main roster. I think they would be top stars, man. They in would. NXT, for they sure. Would. Yeah. yeah. So like they do have gems, right? Let's, yeah, let's be honest. AEW has gems. Mm. But we've always said the issue is the direction from the management and yeah. the booking. The, uh, booking. the booking and the marketing. Yeah, you know, like we talked about, lah. Like none of them we view as stars. Like when you watch that program, it's like who's the big name? You know, MJF. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they did. Uh, I for some reason I watched a bit of Collision. Ah. Uh, they gave the mic to Dustin Rhodes, and you know, mm. Dustin Rhodes yeah, five like minutes promo yeah. is amazing, yeah. right? Mm. Apparently, Dustin Rhodes is targeting Jungle Jack Perry right now. They're gonna have a match on Dynamite, so uh, he wants so, to teach a lesson to a young kid. Apparently, so it's basically Dustin trying to give the rub to uh, Jungle Boy la, or Jack yeah, Perry la, he's, la. Gonna, he's gonna put over Jack Perry. Let's yeah, be honest. La. I mean, well, you know, kudos to him, right? Like he he's trying to do right by the company and everything, but it's it's Jungle, it's Jack Perry. You know, it's uh, it's like you want to bet on the wrong horse, really, mm. like kind of thing. Like, mm. I get they're trying to push them as stars. Mm. But I just feel like you're pushing the wrong guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. How I wish Ricky Starks was in this role. Holy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. People who you know can deliver or have proven themselves to deliver mm. in whatever small opportunity they have. Oh, well. Okay, let's uh, let, let's move on to NXT Battleground right yeah. now. Uh, yeah, I yeah. didn't watch it live, but <laughs> you're like, F uh, AW already. Huh? Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so going back to what I brought up like almost half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I know, right? We sidetracked. Like, but it's fine, it's fine. That's how the show goes. Um, the fact that they did it at the UFC Apex was one of the main reasons I was like, okay, maybe I should watch. It felt different. Yep, you yep. know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is like kind of the first time they've really married the, the whole TKO thing together in such a way. Can you explain it to me? Is the UFC Apex like their performance center or something? Yeah, la. so it's the UFC's version of the performance center. Lo. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think because it is a, it is not set up for something like uh, NXT, like, you know, um, the NXT performance center. Yep. It's purpose built for that, right? It. I don't know if it looked a bit bare to you. 
Uh, my my thoughts of it was it didn't look as impressive as the NXT. Yeah, right. Center, yeah. Right. That that was yeah. instantly my thought. I was like, oh, it, it kind of looks worse than their usual. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I get uh, you. Arena, whatever you know. But it is what it is. Whatever you know. To me, that's one of the selling points. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say this. I still miss black and gold. For whatever reason, this current Shawn Michaels version of NXT is still missing the mark a little bit. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm not saying it's black. Uh, I'm not saying it's 2.0. But they are definitely in a rebuilding phase. And it's... Mm, mm. I, okay, I felt like they had the chance to do something really revolutionary here. But they went the safe route. What do you mean by that? Okay, we'll, we'll, okay, I will come back to that as we go and talk about okay. the card. But okay. I really feel like they could have done something super different in terms of the industry. Think about the two main events. Mm. And they went with the safe outcome as opposed uh, to, gotcha. you know, okay, gotcha. you feel what I'm okay. saying, right? Yeah. Yep, okay, yep. so uh, let's jump in. Um, I don't know how much you've uh, kept up with NXT, but like, you know, when you look at this uh, Women's North American Championship match, you got mm. Kalani Jordan, Soul Rooker, Lash Legend, Fallon Henley, Jada Parker, and Mee Chin. I tell oh. you, let, right off the bat, I already know half of those names. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about like people like Soul Rooker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's Soul super, Rooker. like she has that Soul Crusher. Yeah, which, which is uh, amazing finisher. I saw it. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> it's a cutter but with extra movement yeah you, it's you, like a gymnastic like the hit on the turn buckle and then he, she flips it into an RKO right something like that yeah it's I don't like it. like you know what makes the RKO so good and we've talked about it before it's simple you don't yeah. need steps you don't need a turn buckle to pull it yeah. off you can yeah. just pull it out, out in, uh, nowhere or uh, you know out of uh, the blue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, right? Mm. I, I think the more intricate a finisher is, the more you risk losing the audience. Like, that's why I feel like the Zoe Stark's 360 oh, yeah, thingy it's... that she does also like, yeah, Bro, a bit too much. Yeah. O- Oblivion. I hate Oblivion. Liv, you don't Liv like... Morgans. Yeah, it's the one because you need ropes. But there are a lot of finishes that require the elements of a ring to do. I mean, I would yeah. say that's a simple finisher as well, I... right? Yeah, like it's like a code breaker, but with the ropes assisted. Not even, is it? Isn't it like a downward spiral? Because it's a face breaker. It's not a knee to the face, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I get it. I mean, it's like it looks like a code breaker yeah, in the I, say, the way it's set up. I I mean, what difference does it make if you're in the ropes versus if you're in the middle of the ring doing it? No, no difference. I it actually looks, looks cooler, I guess. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. She has to do the rebound thing. But once again, it's compli- It's an extra complication that looks flashy, but it doesn't lend to the devastation of the move. And that, yeah. to me, is a move got to look devastating, you know? I want somebody to bring back the mystique of a DDT. Like, if there's any young person or wrestler in NXT, right? Can mm. you guys make your DDT your finisher? Well, I think it would be pretty dope. Well, you know what? It's actually a really dope finisher that's a DDT. What? John Moxley's Death Rider. It's literally a DDT, mm. but it's a double underhook DDT. And, yeah. like, you know, the, depending on how they sell it, it can look devastating. So It, it does. Oh my yeah. God, we, we just complimented John Moxley. He goes to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so what did you think of the match? Obviously, Mee Chin is there as the veteran to sort of guide everybody. Uh, yeah, to me, yeah. it just was, uh, ooh, big mess. Everybody doing a- acrobatic stuff. I'm not okay. saying any of it was bad. I'm saying that it's just a lot of stuff happening. And that's what happens. In, this is what you expect in this style of match. Lah. Yeah. yeah I, okay, I learned a, bo- a lot about a couple of wrestlers that I've never really paid attention to. Like, mm. Felon Henley yep. came across as impressive to me. Yep. Uh, I got a closer look at Soul Ruka. Beyond mm. just her finisher, I yep. think she does have potential. She yes. can work. Uh, but to me, what's very curious to me is like, Kelani Jordan never gave showed me anything that was interesting or special or okay. anything that will make her be the winner. Yeah. So, what, so what? can you say that upset? <laughs> is it an upset? I don't know. I well, maybe that's what they're thinking. Is like, okay, out of this whole bunch, Kelani Jordan, like the least impressive, let her win. Because <laughs> the rest way. the rest all have some sort of character to them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Less legend is like we all know, you know, her her, her stuff with yeah. tricks Trick. is hilarious. Yeah. Um Jada Parker also like yeah. Is that, well, is she, does she, you know what I mean? I not know. not everybody can get a shine in these type of matches. Like we all know, these type of matches usually you'll have one or two people that really stand out. One yeah. or two people sort of they are there as the bodies yeah. to take bums, right? Yeah, and yeah. 
I I have no idea why she won because she didn't impress me or didn't stand out at all in this match. But yeah, I guess she's like the it was supposed to be an upset because I, I did read results from Bleacher Report and like how mm. they analyze it, and they all keep saying like, oh, this is an upset victory. They they just gonna push this one person that is like not as well known as the rest. Maybe mm. that's a reason. So yeah, I, I came away from this match sort of like a. Uh, yeah, like what you said lah. Like, huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't know exactly why it is. my reaction, bro. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but, maybe huh? maybe okay. this whole ladder match six way for the North American Championship has been overdone and overplayed, you know? But here's the issue, right? This is supposed to crown the inaugural mm. North, uh, NXT Women's North American Champion. So, this lady, if she's not going to be a big deal or she's not going to push her as a big star going forward, it's going to be a waste because... She just made history, right? So she's forever be the first. Like, yeah, well, I mean, like we said, lah, you know, sometimes you need to give people who are not outstanding something to out to be outstanding with. Like, okay, here's I'm, an example. Okay. The first undisputed WWF champion. Let's face it. <laughs> the Rock and Stone Cold were already made names. Yeah, you yeah, needed to make Chris Jericho. So you make him... The first, and it's one of those things that he can bring up anytime he wants, right? Okay. In this case, he, she is the first North American champion because everybody else, like we said, already has a character. Bro, but my argument is Chris Jericho won the world title. So the prestige of the world title can elevate Chris Jericho. Yeah, yeah. Right now, the NXT North, North American Championship has completely no prestige. <laughs> they need someone to give prestige to the title. <laughs> you get my, my yeah, issue yeah. with this? No, no, no. That is very true as well. It's a good point. It's a good point. Oh, so, I mean, God. we'll have to wait and see. La. You know, maybe she might... They, they obviously see something in her and maybe she's very coachable. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next okay. up, let's move on to the NXT Tag Team Championship. Nathan Frazier and Axiom versus the OC. Were you surprised that the, the young boys kind of won clean over two veterans? Not surprised. Mm. But what I was surprised was how well the OC were being presented in yeah. NXT. They look badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I mean, they've always been badass for whatever reason. It's just, you know, it's, they're just... Uh, AJ Styles lackeys la, on the main yeah, roster. Yeah. That's about Unfortunately. it, Unfortunately. Right? But yeah, this actually make me pay attention to an mm. OC match and I really thought like the Gallo, uh, what, the good brothers yeah. were really impressive. Um, mm. Led the match. And um, I've never really paid attention to Nathan Fraser and Axiom, but I think they are a pretty cool tag team. Like, they do have chemistry, in my opinion. For some uh, reason, uh, yeah. they remind me of the Rockers. And considering really? Shawn Michaels is booking them, you know what I mean? They're two high flyers, right? They're very similar mm. in style, but like, for they are like 2024's version of the Rockers in that. They're exciting. They're not really like promo guys because let's face it, Shawn yeah. and Marty were not promo guys in that era. Yeah, know? yeah. But they were just exciting to watch and they yeah. tried to, you know, portray that as much as possible going up against OC. OC, you had a big guy and you had a more technical guy, right? Yeah. My my only thing that I was curious is like, how are they going to book two high flyers but one is wearing a mask, one is not wearing the, a mask, right? Like, mm. how will you make them stand out but also work well, like, aesthetically as a team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, the, I, that's, that's the thing that I felt a bit of a mismatch yeah. in terms of how they are being presented. I mean, they can just colour scheme, uh, you know? Like, okay, so blue and gold are our colours, you only wear blue. And, like, just matching yeah. outfits can already, law. What what I wish is that, okay, if you have one guy who's masked, he yeah. can be the mysterious one, mm. and then the other guy really helps carry the team's personality. But yeah. that's not Nathan Fraser, la, so. Yeah. So, I mean, I, but I still enjoyed the match, you know? Don't yeah. get me wrong. It was yeah. a good match. Yeah, yeah, it was... Um, Let's talk about Lola Vice versus Shayna Baszler. NXT uh, Underground match. This was oh. my guilty pleasure match oh, of right. the event. Okay. Before we get to this, I, f- I forgot to bring up, right? Because this yeah. whole event was hosted by Sexy Red. Okay. Oh, I have no <laughs> idea who Sexy Red is. And I know uh, Booker T loses his shit every time she comes. Is she a rapper? Is she some sort yeah. of a performing artist? I feel very boomer right now. Please, I know you are into the, you know, the hip-hop scene. Explain no, no, to no. me who is this Sexy Red. I'm in, but I'm not in too deep, bro. And Sexy Red <laughs> is just too deep. Too <laughs> in too deep for me. Is she one of those like Megan Thee Stallion or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicki she Minaj? Is. She types? is. She is. I think she's probably walking the path that Nicki Minaj laid. La, the, uh, Car- the Cardi B. She's like a Gen Z version, Megan uh. Thee Stallion or Cardi uh. B. <laughs> but the problem, the problem is, so I, 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 I you know, kind of follow their Reddit and like stuff people say about her. It's like, <laughs> 
the funny ironic thing is that she's not sexy at all but because of <laughs> sexy red you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so so people were saying like um, the, the issue with her is that she's very non-PG generally yeah. in her music in her yeah. character mm. you know she just goes around twerking for no reason and like getting naughty and that's why it was so hilarious when she did that uh, I'm just a sexy boy that's how you got Shawn Michaels yeah, yeah and, and didn't they on social media get Shawn Michaels to twerk as well or something like that no 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 they were saying like we, you're lucky Shawn did, didn't twerk but oh. um, but I think somebody was like okay people were just making a whole bunch of 90s HBK jokes like uh-huh. oh HBK still got it. Like, yeah. HBK rising <laughs> Wait, since the 90s. So, she is, like, someone who's up and coming. La. She's not a nobody. La. Yeah, yeah. She's a big deal. I mean, okay. not a big deal. I mean, like, if you go hip-hop stuff, like, complex yeah, yeah. and all that, they know who Sexy Red is, okay. right? Okay, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just like the boomer in me. Like, I was like, who is this? Give yeah, me yeah, Missy yeah. Elliott, damn it. Fuck. Give me, give me. Missy Elliott, man. Oh, jeez. Bro, get your freak on. Get your freak on. Get your, get your, get your. Okay. <laughs> I love that shit. Okay. Uh it's like like flashbacks to me at Locks on a oh my God, Saturday Locks. night <laughs> back in the day. Anyway, okay, oh, let's move on. Oh, bro, I'm showing now my age. Know. Now we know. Showing my young. age. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> Lola Vice, Shayna Baszler, underground match. Okay, you you know my stance on these shoot uh, work MMA yep. matches. Yep, yep. And I will say this for a work. MMA style, I guess it was the best worked MMA style match. You're saying Lola Vice did a better job than Ronda Rousey and Shayna Vice? <laughs> no, big, uh, big, yeah, because uh, I don't know how to... Oh, I, you know what they did? I think that they did on purpose. Mm. They dimmed the lights. <laughs> did you notice? They turned the lights. They only got one like, m- like mild spotlight on there. I'm like, okay, we can't make this look real so we blur your vision a bit. Okay, isn't this supposed to be like a raw underground type of yeah. match stipulation? Like no ropes. Yeah. They really make it like raw underground. Yeah. I thought <laughs> like okay, Lo- okay, Lola Vice, I kind of like because I've seen yeah. her UFC stuff. She's mm. that girl that after she knocked out people, she start dancing, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so uh, okay, she's legit. You, we know Shayna is legit. And both of them have learned the wrestling style. So mm. I feel like just by that. Metric alone, I think they would have delivered a better worked MMA match than maybe yep. Ronda because I, I don't know why Ronda felt like she never got wrestling. Yeah. Um. So that already I think has that going for them. The raw underground vibe actually is really good. Like I felt it works better in NXT than on mm. a main roster because they can have that grittiness. Yeah. And also kind of explain that these people are raw mm. or these people are not as polished. That's why they yep. can. They can do all this MMA stuff. So yeah. that that works. To me, what didn't work was I can't. It's like watching the Jake Hager versus Wardlow in AEW. Do you remember that match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. It... It's like you want to do all this MMA work stuff. Then suddenly you do one random arm breaker. It, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or power bomb or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, like uh, I agree with you. I'm not. I'm by no means saying this was a good match. I would have rather they did a regular match. Oh, you know what? Here's the other thing. You are in the UFC Apex Center or the perform whatever the hell they call yep. it, right? Why not do it in an octagon? Mm. And so mm. you know what I mean. Like I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to like set up the whole octagon. Blah blah blah. Actually, and then put I it was. Down. Yeah, I was wondering why didn't they like do an octagon event. It, it, yeah. I know. See, that's that's my whole thing about yeah, they do it at the UFC Apex, but they're doing it in a regular ring. You know, like, oh, make it a whole big deal, but actually just so it's just a warehouse. So you it, would have wanted it to come to be done, the entire should be done in an octagon? I I I mean I'm just throwing around ideas. I yeah. felt like it just after the initial wow, doing it in the AFC Apex, uh, after that it, it me- means nothing already. It, it just, just it was just a name. Yeah, it was just a name. After that, it's, oh, it's just a warehouse. And then this match, oh, they just take out the ring ropes. I don't know, mm. put up some cage thing. Like, give it some USC, uh, UFC element. Like, uh, remember Ken Shamrock in the Lion's Den match? Yeah, and it was essentially an octagon like, that they created yeah. for the match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that would have helped with the aesthetics, or at least the presentation of mm. it. Mm. Uh, but I guess I guess this match <laughs> served its purpose. I mean, it did yeah. highlight Lola Vice, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but- I, once again, I am not a fan of work MMA matches. Ultimately, think, they look hokey. 
They I look, don't think anyone yeah. is a fan because okay, especially if you're your UFC guy, you yeah. love UFC and MMA, you'll be like, what the fuck is this shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're a wrestling fan, you get bored by it. It's like he's punching and kicking. Where's the drop kicks and where's all the cool shit that yeah. wrestling has? Yeah. So you're in you're you're only appeasing the intersection of fans who are like No, but even <laughs> you then know? you are not. It's a lose lose situation, I think. Like I yeah. get that they are trying to portray oh Lola Vice MMA uh that's why we've always said what? An MMA gimmick re- rarely works. Yeah. It's only ever worked for the top tier uh, stars like Ken Shamrock and yeah. like Ronda Rousey. And the only reason Ken Shamrock was so good at it because ultimately he became a pro wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, I, again, if this match was to highlight Lola Vice, mm. Lola Vice already got a victory over Sheila Baszler, over Natalia. Clearly, they are you know they are pushing her. They want yeah, her yeah. to be a big deal, but I I do not know. I haven't seen enough of her to say mm. that okay, she's definitely the next big star. You know, bro, it's it, it's the hip shaking, bro. It's the hip shaking. That's why she's on the poster and everything. Uh, uh, I, okay. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. And also, like you know, the last time they did something like that, Shayna lo- um uh, beat Ronda. So it's like Ronda doing the favors for Shayna. Now Shayna is doing the favors for Lola. That was the whole point to so give you're... to bequeath the you are MMA. <laughs> gimmick title to Lola Vice, you know? You're, you're telling me Lola Vice is a better, you know, star than Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler or something? Well, Shayna Baszler maybe, but I don't know. Like, Ronda Rousey yeah. came with the, you know, her whole, yeah. like, history. La. She was a UFC champion after all. It's tough. Yeah. I really don't think that this whole MMA gimmick works unless you've been a champion somewhere else before, like yeah. a Brock, like a yeah. Ken Shamrock or Ronda yeah. Rousey. Maybe we can ask this question to chat, like, like mm. for you guys, you know, listening in, like, have you guys actually enjoyed any worked mixed martial arts match in the yeah. context of pro wrestling? And if so, which match you guys enjoy the most? Because I can tell you what, which match I enjoy, like, mm. for me personally, um, there was this one random match on Raw. Was it like uh Owen Hart versus? Oh no, no was it Ken- Bulldog versus Ken Shen, or was it Owen Hart versus Ken Shen, I think it was Owen in the Lions Den, right? Yeah, no, no. There was this one time they went to Stu's house and they did it in a oh, dungeon. The dungeon remember that match? match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, I think what? That was, was in the pay per view. What? Was it a pay per view? Okay, it was. It was Ken Shamrock fighting against one of the Hart family. But I, just I think it was. Who. I think it was Owen. And then was Owen it? cheated to win. He used something to win and bash him on the head or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember because they fought in the dungeon and then they banged the head and then yeah, they yeah. got. Yeah, it was a whole no. thing. But a- I loved it. Yeah, the dungeon floor was all wood, so it sounded really like bang, bang, bang. It sounded really brutal. Yeah, it was badass. So that yeah. was badass because those guys really looked badass and they and actually worked it like a badass match. And it was taped. It was edited. Mm. This one, no edit. That's why I edited it. That's why they dimmed the lights. Uh, so you can't see all the, you know, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so, maybe so. Well... <laughs> okay, let's move on. Because I really do not know what else we can say about this match. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, if anything, we what we can say is they have a lot of faith in Lola Vice and she's going to be the MMA gimmick character from now on. Like, yeah. the one. Um, okay, Oba Wait. Femi... Uh, what? Sorry, Irvin said something very interesting. Apparently, they come com tickets to UFC corporate partners for mm. public tickets cost 250 USD for the event ooh wow okay well I mean oh my God. I guess but here's the problem with comping as well and I'm glad Irvin brought that up because there were a few shots I noticed huh? front row nobody I'm mm. like oh my god they, those are the comp tickets the comp yeah, and you know the deal with these corporate like they are maybe not really fans. They just show up, you know, show face, and halfway through it's out already. Yeah, so I thought yeah. that was a bad shot. Like I remember what, very specifically one of the drone shots or the you know on the mm. gimbal shots, whatever, like top down shots. I was yeah. like, wow, the entire front row is empty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. Oh, uh, sh- I just saw what Div said. Uh, Div Div really came through. Thanks, bro. thanks, girl. Like fully loaded in your house in 1998. Yes. Owen Hart was Ken Shamrock. That classic, was the match. Classic. Yeah. Irvin says Lola Vice style is aggressive salsa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's her uh, style. We Aggr- have figured it out. So, oh, until they make her finisher like some sort of a hip attack. Like you know, Naomi has that real real view thing. Can you yeah, imagine yeah. Lola Vice? Her finisher is she. Oh, I know, I know. Sting face, but in salsa. The oh salsa sting face. Salsa. <laughs> it tastes like salsa then. Okay, gotcha. Oh gotcha. god, okay, let's play, let's uh, let's move on. Let's yeah, move let's on. move on. Let's move on. Um we Next got Obert Femi versus yes. Wesley versus Drink Coffee. I mean Joe Coffee. 
Oh my god, the Uber feminists were yes. on track. Um, I, I, I understand now why Oberfemi is so over, and he is like, you know what he is? What he is? What they wished Omas was. <laughs> Like I, I, I actually had a better comparison or like something I felt was more appropriate. Mm. I think he was Ahmed Johnson done good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no he, he got the he's got the Ahmed Johnson body, no? Like yeah, the, he has the, he has Ahmed Johnson body. He has the height of kind of like Omas. He's from Nigeria, right? Like I think that if they let him cook and not saddle him with some Nigerian giant gimmick mm, or some, mm. you know, uh Commander Aziz. So yeah, yeah, give yeah, yeah. no right? me shit. Yeah. yeah, just just let him be. And he has the intensity. He has what like you know, we talk about how um Omas just looks tall, but he <laughs> somehow doesn't look intimidating. Yeah. Oba yeah, Femi yeah. looks intimidating because he's tall and jacked and big size. Yeah. And he moves well in the ring. Mm. And I, I feel his his matches are good. Like yeah, yeah. and and he's new, right? He's like only like less than two mm. years in the business, apparently. So he picked it up. Yes, he, he won. Didn't he win the breakout tournament? And that's why he got the shot at the North American yeah, title? Yeah, he won the breakout tournament as well. So um, I've always was impressed by Oberfemi's like physique and you mm. know, like how he comes across. And this match proved that he can go in the ring as well, in my opinion. You, you know that this match was meant to showcase him. He was tossing Wesley around. Poor Wesley. I mean, and he's the high flyer, right? So yeah, he's the perfect guy. He's just tossing him around. Same for Joe Coffey, a little bit more technical, grounded, uh, British strong style. What's so poor thing about Wesley is Wesley uh, had to vacate his the title because he was injured, right? Yeah, yeah. And now that he's back, I thought he will never get back the title. <laughs> <laughs> because it's on Oba Femi. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that they had me in this match thinking mm. that Wesley was going to win. Or, yeah, get back you know, the title. Yeah, yeah when the whole, um, what was that, uh, Gallus boys came out and tried yeah. to like Tisiao over family. So instantly I like freaking fantasy booking mine, right? I was like, okay, Wesley is gonna win this. And then Wesley is gonna be like, I'm the honorable champion. I will defend one on one against Oberfemi because Gallus interrupted. Right? Mm, but mm. of course none of that actually happened. Oberfemi retained the title. Yeah. I think Oberfemi is gonna be one of their cornerstone stars in NXT going forward. Mm. Like I mean if he's not ready, yeah. um he's probably gonna take over that Braun Breaker role, that yeah. like badass guy. I do like Wesley though I feel that yeah. Wesley does have personality even mm. though as a high flyer it's, he can just focus on his moves but I think he does have personality to go along with it yeah. Gallus what's your thoughts on Gallus and Joe Coffey <laughs> I think unfortunately they are like New Catch Republic they are like a lot of the British wrestlers they've been pigeonholed into the same oh they're the British guys like I don't know what it is but they have a very like you know like mm. a very standard template. It's like, and WWE does this a lot, right? It's like mm. the Japanese girls or the British guys all have the same vibe. Gotcha. I get what you mean. Do, do you, okay, this is like legitimate, right? Like, mm. do you think that this style works better in AEW? What style? The British style? No. Yeah. Is it like, in terms of the presentation? <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think anything works well in AW because then they would be booked <laughs> like shit. It's not uh, even... It... <laughs> oh, dear God. No, no, I, like, I just feel like a British strong style feels more like an... feels better for a more wrestling-centric kind of uh, booking. Like, if you if you work for Ring of Honor... Or yeah, like... okay. So, I, if you were going to bring up AEW, I'd be like, bro, what, what? Are you drunk, bro? What's going on? Nothing no, no, I, nothing I, I, about AEW is wrestling centric, okay? The second somebody I mean. got the second somebody got set on fire, they oh, again yeah. throw out the sports presentation. Alright? Okay? Throw it out the window. Yeah. You you but you get okay, I, I know you get what I mean. You just want to <laughs> yeah, shoot yeah. AEW. Yeah. No, I just thought that I want to shoot on like it's the wrestlers doing their thing, sure, right? Like, yeah. And we've seen really good European, quote-unquote, style matches in NXT before. You know, Gunter, Ilya, uh, yeah. those matches. Uh, even, uh, what's his face? Big Strong Boy. Uh, the something Pete, I forgot. Not Pete Dunne. No, Pete Dunne and... Yeah, uh, Pete Dunne's partner lah. Who's like, I don't know what happened to the new catch already. They all disappeared. Uh, shit, shit, see, see my brain just died. Uh, Pete Dunne and... Guys, help me out. Oh, Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. Irving says Gallus helped The Rock train for his WrestleMania return. They got the politics part down already. <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, that's shit. good, that's good. The Gallus boys on the board of directors. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Okay, okay I, 
if they can develop that like booking or like they are this badass like mm. enforcers for like the British wrestler. Can you imagine you link Gallus up with like Gunter or yep. like freaking if Drew wanted some henchmen? Hey, hin hin Drew. Yeah. Gallus Hench- boys. Yeah. Gallus boys. Okay, that makes sense. I mm. think that can. But they will, again, unfortunately, there will be a ceiling to them. Mm. Right? I think so too. Yeah. Um. I think, yeah, what they need is one guy to be outstanding. Uh, essentially yeah. what it is, right? Like you talk about align themselves with a Drew McIntyre, a European uh, wrestler who's seen as a main eventer. You know? mm. But all that aside, once again, this match very much was the Oberfemi show. Let's yeah. make him as, uh, put him over as big as possible. Yep, yep. The Oba feminists. Mm. I'm one of them. I'm a feminist and I'm an Oba feminist as well. <laughs> sure. And so far, all the champions have retained, by the mm. way. Very, Very safe booking, going back to what I uh, uh, said earlier, right? Got you. I get and, you now. And then we go to Roxanne Perez versus Jordan Grace. Like, okay, I, I guess I get the quote unquote politics involved, but. Could they not, and I'm just going to jump into the finish here, could they not have made it such a thing, a talking point, if Jordan Grace won the NXT title and took it to impact? Like, Mm -hmm. that is what I mean about they played it safe. It was super like, oh, Roxanne Perez beat Jordan Grace. It was a good match. You know, did you see the one point where Jordan Grace's uh, earring got caught or something and then it was bleeding? Yeah, was it on purpose? Like, like from Roxanne? No, it was... it was an accident. I think her earring got caught on Roxanne's like fishnets and then ripped it out. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. But it was bleeding, right? I remember it was sucker yeah. bleeding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was gnarly, but I guess it wasn't part of the match, so no, not no, really counted. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the finish? So it was he she reversed Jordan Grace's finisher into a cutter, and honestly, I had to re- rewind like five times to even see what she did. I know, um, Vic Joseph was like, oh, reverse, reverse. I was like, I didn't see the reverse. It looked like. Jordan Grace hit her finish to me. Uh, it was a bit clunky, like, to, not mm. gonna lie. Like, I yeah. I thought it could have, it warranted a better finish, like, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they tried to get too fancy with it, I think. Yeah. But how do you think Jordan was portrayed? Like, she did come across as, like, the badass general, yes. like, beating up on Roxanne. So, I feel, I feel like... It did look po- strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's... How else do you portray... Okay. To be honest, like most of the match, I felt like Jordan Grace should have just beat the piss out of yeah. Roxanne Perez. But I understand you cannot have another company's champion come in and do that to your champion. But at the same time, just look at them. Look at yeah, the difference, yeah, like, you know? Yeah, like, clearly, they have a physical size difference. Yeah. Roxanne is like AJ Lee, Hin Hin, mm. um, small size girl, and she's fighting like a badass, big size uh, yeah. lady in Jordan Grace. Honestly, they should have given Jordan Grace the broad lesser treatment if they really wanted to go all out. Yeah. See, it should have been her, her mauling Roxanne. Can you yeah. imagine? So, so that's the thing I, I mean by me saying that they played it way too safe here. A, everyone would be talking if Jordan Grace came in and just annihilated Roxanne Perez. Visually, yeah. it would make sense also if you think about it, right? Yeah. Yep. You know? Yep. And, but no, it was a bit of a screwy finish because, okay, who... Who was that girl that came out? Um, um, was it uh, Dana, Dana Brooke, right? No, no, no the uh, other one. Tatum Paxley, was it? Tatum Paxley, oh yeah. I have, yeah. No, I, I have no reference frame of reference. I don't know who, who she is. Uh, she came out to go and B.O. Uh, Jordan Grace's championship. She even took it, went to the entryway. And that's where Dana Brooke, who is now like, what? Something by, by Elegance. Or that something? ass by Elegance or something like that. I don't know what the hell that is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, from my very limited knowledge of NXT, I f- I heard that Tatum Paxley's gimmick is all about she's desperate for goal, any kind uh. of goal. So that could set up like you know a future NXT crossover where Tatum Paxley goes after the Jordan Grace. But that, so this is a talent exchange, like, Okay, we WWE gets Jordan Grace and we highlight TNA, but TNA you get Tatum Paxley. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably that's it, right? Okay, uh, okay. My Okay, if I were to book this fantasy book this, right? Mm. I would have gone with your idea. Mm. I would have gone with Jordan Grace, like completely annihilating Roxanne. But how there will be continuity, in my opinion, is Roxanne is clearly a heel, right? At this point yeah. in time. Yeah. Right? So while she's being mauled, she suddenly calls for help. Like, oh, can you let Tether Paxley come and help? Right? Yeah. And But still, even with the so-called assistance, 
uh, Jordan Grace powers through and still defeats uh, Roxanne. Whatever happens next, right? You know, the one where CM Punk came in and mm. like, you know, Try to talk to Roxanne. her, say that you're better than you. All that could still happen even with him, her being demolished. Like, Wait, wait. What about the title change? So the title change, like Jordan wins, right? Okay. And and, and CM Punk still like, you know, like gives her his... um. You know, like it's okay. You know, you have you could have done better, blah blah blah. But if only you didn't cheat. Like I think, I think, mm. I think the issue with him was that she cheated. If she had lost honorably, you yeah. could have accepted it. So they they could have, they could have still gone and done that that whole side rivalry or potential yeah. keys that she might fight AJ AJ Lee. Okay, that so amazing, l- l- right? let's just set the context because this was not on the show. It was on their social media, right? Yeah. It was sort of a behind-the-scenes thing where Roxanne Perez was being interviewed and then CM yeah. Punk came out to give him fatherly advice because yeah. he's her wrestling father. But Roxanne Perez told, called him a hypocrite and then like, like yeah. go yeah. F off yeah. lah. So yeah. that... Is the potential setup for either AJ Lee to come mm. back, right, and, mm. and and feud with Roxanne Perez, or a returning, newly face Cora Jade? Yeah. Because yeah. let's not forget the history with Cora Jade and CM Punk. Cora Jade was inspired by CM Punk, right? We've seen the videos before, and yeah. Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez have a huge history. It'd be weird to see Cora Jade as a face again, but you know what? Hey, you know, crazier things have happened, right? Yeah, yeah, but I I think that so either way works, but either way will not be affected by the title loss. Yeah, yeah, no, but the whole issue is that, and that's great that they are setting that up. But my point, and I think what you're getting at also is, I think it would have been so much more interesting if they did the title switch, if yeah. Jordan Grace was the NXT champion, and they may have held it for one or two months, maybe, and do you know whatever lah. Hey, imagine. She won, and then mm. all the chatter that coming out from the internet post show. Yeah, she carries it all the way until like their slam anniversary event, which is like a big deal for TNA. Mm-hmm. And then she has a return match, and then Roxanne goes to TNA and wins it. Yeah, and then like wins. So so at least you get that quote unquote forbidden door, you know, sort yeah. of event. Unfortunately, and once again, this is what I mean by NXT played it very safe here. Too safe. Too and safe. It was just boring. I don't yeah. want to say boring, but you know what I mean? It just was like, oh, okay, that happened. Did that take your enjoyment away from the rest of the show? Yes. After that? I mm. like, No hesitation because the exact same thing happened in the next match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, let's talk about the next match then. Let's talk about the next match. And leading up to this match, right? Okay, we had Ethan Page showing up on NXT. Big, like, whoa, big reveal, right? Even yep. And I thought Big Joseph was really good at it. Like, wasn't he in A? And then he gets cut off. It was perfect timing. I don't yeah. know if you saw the clip. Like, he I almost... Saw. Like, he almost said A-E-W, but then he got cut off by Booker T and Ethan Page. So that was brilliant. Like, chef's kiss. The timing yeah. on that was perfect, right? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. The NXT before Battleground. Trick Williams, Ethan Page in the ring promoing against each other. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It felt and like Carmelo versus LA Knight promo. I'm, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Did you watch that promo? I did, I did. Trick felt... Like he was intimidated or like the moment got to him, but he fumbled it quite a bit. I was very surprised. So that's the thing, right? Mm. That's okay, that is the magic of WWE. Yeah. But also that highlights that these people in NXT are still rookies. Yes. Are still new to the business. Yes. Because you you forget because you hide it with all the world class presentation that WWE yeah. does, NXT yeah. does. Whoop that trick. It's all fun and games, right? Yeah, it's but all that, audience participation. It's, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that can also mask a lot of the flaws of the wrestler, right? Mm, mm. May, we know that Trick has always been the sidekick to Carmelo Hayes. Maybe there was a reason. Maybe they when they first recruited him or they got him there, they were like, okay, this guy has all the size, everything in the world, but he's, he's not comfortable yet on the mic or he hasn't mm. developed the ability. And he has developed it to a certain extent Yes. But Ethan Page yeah. is on another... Bro, okay, people forget, right? Because Ethan Page was booked to shit in AEW, but <laughs> he he was one half of the tag team champions in uh, TNA yeah. with uh, Jason Alexander... Oh, no, Josh Alexander. Mm. They, they call it the North. Mm. Long-running tag team, like, really, like, legends. Yeah. He was the promo guy in that tag team. Mm. Even in AEW, when people were shitting on his booking, 
no one was saying that he had a terrible mic skills because he had actually one of the better mic skills yes. between him and Scorpio Sky. I think uh, we were talking about like, why aren't they pushing this guy? He can cut a promo, you know? Yeah, yeah. He was um, good. Yeah. So that, that's the whole thing, right? Going into this, I was like, okay, I know that Trick just won the title. It's the quote unquote whoop that era, whatever, and he's hot right now. No. But I feel like they would have done so much better having Ethan Page win. Yeah. Yeah. truly truly shocked everybody by going oh my god first day in the company new guy he beats Trick Williams and then Trick has to fight back once again give, you give Trick Williams that underdog climb from behind and this is NXT so you can afford to do this sort of like shock booking right yeah yeah be be more I would say risk take more risk in yeah. NXT right yeah yeah because they've really shit the bit on one returning AEW star, in my opinion. You know who I'm talking about? Who? Sean Spears. Oh! <laughs> you see? Oh, yeah, yeah. Forget, he, right? Yeah, he no, he's facing off against uh some guy whose name I forget, but he looks like a discount Swerve Strickland. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them, lah. Whatever it is, lah. But the point is, that was a way to have him return and be holy shit, okay, this guy from AEW, he's yeah. way stronger. Yeah. But maybe that's the thing, right? NXT or WWE management do not want to acknowledge AEW wrestlers as like they are a threat. I mean, I get it, but I also think it's like short sighted. Like, you know, it's like that sort of ego bullshit where it's like, no la. Like, okay, at least, okay, what Ethan Page has going for him, he immediately was shot to the main event scene. Yeah. The problem is he lost clean too. Yeah. yeah. You know? He, by every metric, Okay, mm. not every metric. He has a up over like um mm. Trick Williams in my opinion. Like yep. wrestling skills, mic skills. Probably the only thing that Trick has over him is probably his look and presentation. Sure, yep. for sure. Yep. But again, like you need that heel to go against Trick Williams because okay, since if Ethan Page goes and dies out, right? This rivalry dies out because he lost clean, right? Yeah. Who is he gonna fight next? What Noam Da? Like, <laughs> Oh, by the way, I I love Uh, that you brought up Noam Da because I hate this uh, whole group. Like, they're the most irritating group ever. Like, like metaphor? Metaphor. If the the whole gimmick was to piss me off, well (laughs) done. Because I find them, like, okay, X-Pac heat. Like, not not even heat. It's boring. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, insufferable. Even the Chase U was more interesting. Slightly slightly less insufferable. At least I kind of like what they're doing. I actually really like Thea Hall. Yeah, yeah. Tia Hall has potential as well. Yeah. <laughs> Tia Hall as the freaking NXT North American champion. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe she's not ready. Whatever lah. But see, this is my point. Once again, like, they are playing it super safe. They are not taking a chance. Like, yeah, it could be a huge talking point that Ethan Page wins the title here from Trick. And, I mean, we're not even talking about the match because they're fine. I think as wrestlers, as performers, they are, they're fine, right? Yeah. Uh, did, did the match stand out to you in any way? Negative it, or positive? It was serviceable. It, it, yeah. To me, okay, this match is really burdened by its finish because mm. people either wanted to see Ethan Page win, shock everyone and win, or they are curious to see how Trick can survive this match and win. Yeah. yeah. So people care more about the finish than the match itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And it was just a very clean sort of, oh, okay, la, the good guy wins. There you go. I guess... Maybe the way forward is, you know, there's the whole storyline of Ethan Page forcing Ava to sign him to a contract with like whatever stipulations. So maybe in the next few weeks, he's going to have weird stipulations. Like he's going to have weird perks that force Trick to like defend it again in some weird fashion or whatever. Shenanigans lah, basically. Oh, he has to cheat to win. That kind of thing. But yeah, I hate that. Even though they did book him strong as a title contender right off the bat, Mm -hmm. he lost clean. Yeah, yeah. So that already negates his momentum straight away. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it'll be very interesting because technically Ethan is a part of the NXT roster. So now, there yes. could be a rematch. So you never know, right? Mm. Uh, but overall, right? This is yeah. your first so-called NXT PLE that you have actually watched from start to finish. What What's your thoughts overall? I, okay, I, if guys, in the chat, please put in your rating if you watched it. I will give it a six. Like, barely passable. You know, there was no, like, ridiculous nonsense which mm. dragged the rating down, but also, it's way too safe. I mm. wanted 
them and maybe it's just my expectations right but i wish they did more and and try to shock or surprise me you know kalani jordan is a surprise but it's not the surprise people <laughs> care about <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what not, i mean not, yeah not, yeah not like yeah. a surprise i i think um i agree with you actually i will give it a six as well like mm. for me my reasons a bit different like i'm okay with them being safe yeah but i just didn't see anyone from nxt stand out and make me like notice yep. you know like nobody grab this yeah. opportunity by the balls <laughs> and like you know put themselves you know what i would argue that singapore cane match have been in this oh PLE, man. come I'll, on I'll, i'll agree to that i'll agree to that can we put it say... in the freaking put it in the freaking like i don't know pre-show or something but i would still right. watch that shit man I, I, this might this might be a hot take right yeah. but nxt black and gold who was the head creative booker triple h right yeah so Is it crazy to think that out of Triple H and HBK, Triple H just has a better booking mind? Triple uh, HBK was the quote-unquote more over, better performer, mm. but it doesn't really quote-unquote translate as well to booking as what Triple H... Like, Triple H is truly the game. Like, when you compare Triple H's and HBK's careers, right? Yeah. Like, you would, uh, you could argue that HBK had the more successful career, no? Yeah. Bigger yeah. star, right? But Triple H has the... Cerebral assassin. He has the a much better mind for booking the wrestling. Um, that can be a legitimate point, but there's a couple of to me caveats to it. To it, mm. right? Right. Mm. Shawn Michaels is working with legit rookies, ah. Uh, let's be fair. <laughs> that's right? so true. That is uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good okay, point. Like, like if you want to use uh, an analogy, right? I would say Triple H when he had the NXT, with all the indie talents, all this world class, ah, uh, world true. class, but indie talents. That is a freaking good point. Yes, he probably okay. Okay, I'm going to use a football analogy, and uh, I, I, I'm going to guide you <laughs> through it, Mr. Young. Oh God. Okay, go. He, he is like probably the 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 manager of Brighton or something. Okay, so Brighton. <laughs> I know you don't follow football now, but Brighton is like the hipster's choice in the Premier yeah. League these days. Like because they have all these like undervalued talent, mm. but they are performing way above their XP. Like they they, okay. it's like you know right when they sell these players, like, it's gonna be a hundred million dollar yeah, um yeah. like like talent like which is what happened lah. Like mm. they are, they they are gonna be that team that finds all these undiscovered gems. Yeah. For like two million, five million, and then they're gonna sell it for hundred million yeah, by yeah. Chelsea or yeah. whatever, right? So I think Triple H had that team, right? Yeah, this is but, actually that's a very good point. Yes. Yeah, but Shawn Michaels probably is like managing Wrexham right now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> fucking League Two, like bunch of like journey. Okay, not journeyman. Okay, I would say Ethan Page is a journeyman. Mm. Bunch of journeyman and rookies who do not know shit. Yeah. But by his sheer will of personality, like okay, yeah. I'm gonna support Shawn Michaels team. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I get what you mean. And also, let's not forget, like, to your point, right? Triple H's black and gold era had all the indie darlings. Kevin Steen, um, El Generico, you know, yep. Finn Balor, blah, blah, blah. HBK is dealing with that. What is that program called where they're getting athletes from other... Uh, um, uh, how the, was it? Uh, the NIL, Next in Line. Next yeah, in line. yeah, or something like that. You guys in chat, you know what I'm talking about. So, actually, you have a great point. Triple, uh, HBK is really working with all these guys and girls that are not actual wrestlers they are you know molded from scratch raw material so i can see that point yes not everyone can suddenly become a brawn breaker and level up like crazy yeah, yeah. and people might forget uh, but tiffany stratton is only two years in the business as well yeah, true she is a gymnast right she's yeah. not a wrestler yeah but she became one right yeah. so yeah. okay maybe if i want to use a triple h era example right mm. they might they have to work like if Like not everyone can be a Bianca Belair, right? Bianca Belair was from another sport, come into NXT, mm. and Triple H molded her into like this big uh, star, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to me, that's gonna be more of a hit and miss. Like it won't be a hundred percent like conversion rate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 the issue facing NXT. Like to me, right? Mm. I think Dante Chen is the one that comes with some indie background. Oh yeah, actually, you're right. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. Dante Chen has wrestled around the region and mm. has developed some sort of wrestling skill and talent before she he even got on NXT. But a lot of the stars that like you mentioned probably has never wrestled an indie mm. match before in their life before mm. they got into and, the show. And one of the points that Chad brings up too is that uh, they're really good at NXT right now at highlighting characters. 
I would say yes and also no in that some of it can get a bit hokey, chase mm-hmm. you, metaphor, being um, yeah. you know, clear examples. But hey, it, it, even in a negative sense, you remember them, right? Uh, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and we forget. We forget that this is their indie, quote unquote, system. This is not the main roster, right? So yeah. uh, I, I truly hope that, you know, Dante Chen does get some of this personality rub or, you know, packaging. <laughs> the, Singapore yeah. game, the Singapore cane guy law now. Yeah, at least it's something people will remember him by. Mm. Um, Irvin brought up a very interesting point. I just wanted to highlight it for everyone to see. Apparently, since last year, NXT ratings has gone up by 40%. Wow. Yeah, so like... What, the, what the pro- yeah, sure, what they're doing is working, right? But also the yeah. product is hot. It's the TKO effect. Let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah. And, and there were some people talking about the ratings, how... NXT is closer to Dynamite than ever before. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I mean, okay, you know, they've done things like have uh, Cena show up and Undertaker yeah. show up, that kind of thing. And this whole thing of them, quote unquote, cycling out main eventers mm. from the main roster mm-hmm. has worked very well for them. And now with Triple H and HBK in charge, yeah, they're very happy to let each other have, like, okay, uh, let me borrow your Becky Lynch for a bit to put over Lyra Valkyria. Uh, let me borrow so and so, you know? Like, remember back then in the uh, 2.0 era, especially, mm-hmm. Vince would not let, like, one of his guys from the main roster come down. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I like about the new system is mm. that they are not just pushing people from the NXT level up into the main roster. Yeah. They are also allowing stars from the main roster that might have gotten stale yeah. to get refreshed in NXT and reinvent their career, like i.e. Baron Corbin. Yes. Yeah. So so it it feels like a full fledged system. You yeah. know. Yeah. You 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 have an ability to go away for a bit from the main mm. roster and re recreate your. Basically, they created a territory system, a feeder system for WWE. Yeah, w- within their own ecosystem, which is great, right? Yeah. Uh, that being said, I still miss Black and Gold. I still yeah. think Black and Gold had, was the best NXT era. So technically, right, you would have been an AW fan. Like, if it was like the Black and Gold. Lah. No, if, well, I would have been an AEW fan if they put out good pro wrestling. Like, yeah. like duh! <laughs> There was a time when that, AEW and NXT Black and Gold were head to head, and AEW was There was, was doing a better. time. <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was, but the ratings and the quality. Okay, lah. To be fair, once again, AEW did have some quality booking, right? Yeah. But three years later, now we know TK didn't have anything planned after three years. Probably, yeah. He probably. Yeah. I mean, he did have, but I think probably a lot of shit went against him. Like yeah. nobody could have predicted brawl out. Nobody could have predicted yeah. this guy. This guy get injured. So ah, uh, I get it. So yeah, he's probably yeah, yeah. booking shit on the fly right now. Yeah. But uh, let's let's move on to the um, I guess the main event once yeah, again, Clash main- at the Castle, which is happening this upcoming Sunday. If you guys are going to be up watching, I will stream it live on my. Well, no, I'm not streaming the event. Obviously, I'll stream a watch along. Yep. Uh, on Sunday morning, 12 midnight to 3 a.m., I think I'll be able to be awake for that stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm excited to see this event because, bro, there's a lot of big matches happening, like, in my opinion. A lot bro, of things that can change. You're gonna be You're going to be up for that? I will do my best, bro. I mean, I, I, okay, I'm a bit conflicted because right now my body clock says yes, <laughs> but, my, but my mind says no. I got to force myself to sleep like normal ah. timing. Yes, true, true. Yeah. Uh, it, will, it will be a crazy weekend because, yeah. you know, uh, we have things to do that morning on that Sunday morning as well. You know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Oh, mm. yes. <laughs> yeah, for you. <laughs> for sure. I know. It's going to be crazy. But I haven't done a watch long in a while because, you know, everything that's happened. So I'm like, I'm actually excited to do it again. Like, just to yeah, yeah. hang out with people watching wrestling. But okay, yeah. let's get the Clash at the Castle. But before we do that, uh, as always, we have to give a big shout out to Mirage Advisory, our sponsor for the podcast as well. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Guys, do us a favor. Drop them a follow on their social media accounts if you haven't already. If you're listening to this on Spotify, it's M-I-R-A-J Advisory on Instagram. Yeah, for those of you who watched the podcast a few weeks back, you guys have met him or met them, you know, yeah. Daniel and Firos from Mirage. You kind of seen how 
legit proper wrestling fans they are yep. and uh, they are so happy to support this podcast and also you know bring up the wrestling community here in Singapore so all they ask in return guys is for you to follow them on their socials keep up with their stuff as well uh, and we'll definitely want to have them back on the show whether we're going to do another review on <laughs> the podcast or yes. live from a wrestling show in Singapore so that should be really really fun so in the meantime guys follow them on their socials and tell them you know you came from Kick to the Guy D- dual destinies, bro. They might be there. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. Uh, okay. In the meantime, let's talk about Clash at the Castle in Scotland. And once again, well, release, yeah. Th- th- this might be their cycle, by the way. Other mm. than the big four, all their pay per views are going to be PLEs. Excuse me, overseas events. I love it. I love. Yeah. I love a summer run. Just go to all the cities in the world, bro. I'm happy. Yeah. Finally, they realize, hey, the world, you know, world wrestling entertainment. Nah, it's not just USA wrestling entertainment. Yes, yes, yes. And I think maybe, I do not know whether is it because Vince is such a patriot mm. and he's like very pro-Americana. I remember he did used to cut promos like this, right? Yeah. And that's why they keep like, you know, doing stuff in the USA. But I feel that they have mined the market too oh, much. Yeah, yeah probably. for sure. For sure. So now that they are doing these big events less in the US, it means more. You know, it goes back to the whole like, yeah, if this is the only chance for you to catch uh, SummerSlam or or whatever, then you would definitely pay money to go and watch. And now they're doing two nights of SummerSlam for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah. And you realise the big shows they're still doing in in, in, um, US, but they're making a much bigger deal out of it. Yes, exactly. So it's going to be a a so-called hotter ticket to catch (sighs) the show. TKO, I mean, um, yeah, lah, it, it is what it is. They are just leveraging on this partnership. But okay, let's talk about Clash of the Castle in Scotland, yeah. right? Uh, you got Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill versus Alba Fire and Isla Dawn versus Shayna Baszler and Joey Stark. Is there any situation where Bianca and Jade lose the titles? Is no. There, no. Feasibly, but, any, no? Okay, okay. But I don't want Zoe, I, I rather. Personally, for me, it shouldn't have been a three-way tag team match. Mm. Get Zoe and Shayna out of this damn match. We know the hometown crowd is going to go crazy for Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. Yeah. But then then they get the rub, but Jade and Bianca still win the match. I'd rather you have been a straight-up tag team match. Is it? Okay, I know why they're there. Because they don't want the crowd to boo Bianca and Jade. It's very it's simple math. So Alba mm. Fire and Isla Dawn are there as the hometown Okay. Here. Favorite, so they'll get cheered, right? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Shayna and Zoe Stark are there to take the pinfall from Bianca because they don't want Bianca and Jade to get turned, unfortunately, yep. by pinning the hometown heroes. So okay. it makes perfect sense that I can even tell you what's going to be the finish. Bianca and Jade are going to beat Shayna and Zoe Stark. And the hometown heroes are not going to be part of the finish. <laughs> it's as simple Maybe. as that. Maybe, I mean, so you're saying that they are there just to take the pinfall loss. Yeah, 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 yeah pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, don't it, dis- it, I don't dispute your logic. It makes it, sense. It, it's just the most like freaking like obvious, but okay, I get it. You know, they Wrest- don't want to... Wrestling 101. Wrestling yeah. 101. How um, do you feel about them as uh, tag team champions so far? Um, I think it fits the story that they're doing. Like, look, we can all agree as much as they try to push it like, oh, the women's tag team division is a thing. It's not a thing. It's a mm. prop. It's a prop mm. for Bianca and Jade to tell their story, bite their time while Jade gets better, you know, gets more reps in, maybe for a year or so, before they lose and then somebody turns on somebody. So is this the modern version of the mega plow the mega powers exploding? Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. Because they don't need the titles. The titles don't really mean anything as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a year of them building up both of them. Before they before break up. Yeah. The inevitable turn. Yes, somebody, I, and it has to be Bianca turning to give Jade the big rub, lah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I would. Mm. I, I mean, Bianca turning heel would be very interesting, and also it refreshes her character as well. Yes, and yep. you need Jade to get over big, and you know you do it at WrestleMania, lah. So, Ooh. so it, it's a it's a match that makes sense. It's not going to be an exciting, like whoa, surprising thing. Bianca mm. and Jade are going to retain. Yeah. Yep. Um, whether this is the opener, uh, debatable. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, sure. I think it yeah. might be, but yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about the other women's match. And once again, another sort of... Wait, is Piper Niven Irish or Scottish? She's Scottish, Sc- right? She's Scottish. So oh, yeah, okay. it's her hometown. 
Wow, so this will be interesting. Bailey versus Piper Niven. Of course, Piper Niven will have Chelsea Green. Uh, Chelsea Green in her corner. Yeah, yeah. Um, but will people boo Bailey? That's the question. I think for Piper, yes. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. So it's going to be a Rock and Hogan scenario. Mm. <laughs> um, Bizarro what, land. What do you think of Bailey's run as champion right now? Uh, I don't blame her. Mm. I don't think it's her fault. Yep. But she's been really underutilized. Like, like okay. they never put the focus or emphasis on her since she became champion. Yep, yep. She's just yeah. there, right? And sometimes yeah. you even forget who's the champion. Yeah, like people are more into Tiffany Stratton. Yep. They are more into like um, now Nia Jax is yeah. gunning after her for the title. Yeah. So this is just a side quest, lah. But okay, can they afford Bailey going there and just getting booed for beating? Piper Niven or are they going to just say oh it's Bizarro Land blah 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 yeah they're going to do the whole Bizarro Land thing hey don't forget when John Cena was champion and very yeah. early on in her, his run he had one night stand against RVD bro oh yeah yeah that's and right and he was booed like a dog like yeah, mercilessly oh if Cena wins we riot you know that, yeah, that classic was the, sign the classic sign yeah so in my opinion I feel like yeah I think this will test um, Bailey, or yeah. they can use it they can explain it on commentary as like oh you know Bailey's getting ready, gearing up for Nia Jax or by SummerSlam. What? By wrestling someone bigger size than her. Yeah, they're going to train and fight another big size. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to prove um, that she can beat one, you know? Yeah. Okay. So the only way this sort of like will get interesting is if they hot shot the title to Piper. And mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like in terms of perceived placement on the card, right? It really does feel like a hot shot because if Piper wins, it's like it will be a big shot. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, she wouldn't win. She can't win. Because yeah. it doesn't make sense, right? If she's going to win, right? Realistically, is she going to be a heel versus heel match against Nia Jax? No one. Mm. Oh, I mean, Bailey could win it the next night on the next time on SmackDown or some oh, shit. Oh, man. You know? But that, that would devalue her entire damage control storyline, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I, I yeah. just feel that the the conclu- it's a foregone conclusion. Bailey is definitely going to win. Mm. It's just that it's going to be so interesting watching this match because finally. <laughs> There's going to be a crowd reaction there. Yeah. And Piper even has not been hot, but suddenly she's going to be a, the biggest deal ever because she's fighting in her hometown. Correct. So will it be a Piper Niven? I don't know what. Maybe they can have a Scottish song. Then there'll be a sing-off between eh, ooh, ah, versus whatever <laughs> Piper Niven song is. Oh my God. Okay, Because you know what? the crowds in the UK love to sing. Oh, they love chanting. They, yeah. they will probably have football chants everywhere. Oh boy. Uh, but... One positive thing that can come up from this match is suddenly management is going to like suddenly look at Piper Niven and like, holy mm. shit, we actually got a gem under our hands. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I would want that for Piper Niven because I really feel that she has a lot of potential as well. I think she just hasn't been highlighted. Mm. And this is her opportunity. So she's going to take it with both hands as well, for sure. Mm. Uh, okay, let's uh, talk about the Intercontinental Championship. Okay, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable. Is this, is it time? Chad has been doing the best work uh, of his career recently, is it time for Chad? We've talked about it before. I believe that Chad should have won in the previous one, uh, in the triple threat match. I feel like Chad should win the IC title here. Yeah. There's a lot of so-called uncertainty surrounding this match because, as mm. you all know, Chad Gable's free agency or like, you know, contract is coming up mm. and he's, as of now, hasn't resigned yet, right? Mm. So he's feasib- at home. Yeah. So feasibly, he could go into this match with his contract already run out and probably mm. extend it just for this match and after that leave the company. Oh, I I don't see why he would. Like he's literally on a mega role right now. Yeah, but maybe he's delaying signing because he's really knowing that he's leveraged right now. Ah. Just trying to get the best deal, right? Yeah, yeah. My opinion is whatever happens in this match will decide what happens to his career after the fact. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, like he, okay, if he were to win... Then for sure he has resigned, had some mega bumper deal, and he's gonna go and become the IC champ, right? Yeah. But if he's gonna lose and drop the title or or lose his opportunity after this, yeah, it's clear sign that okay, he knows that WWE is not gonna commit to him. Yeah. Just tell WWE, okay, I'm out. I'm gonna go out. So there's a lot of in real life intrigue to me going into this mm, match, right? Yeah. I do yes. personally love Chad being uh Chad Gable becoming a champion. I think he's way overdue. He needs to be an IC champ. Mm-hmm. Um. We all love Sammy, but as of now, we know that Sammy as IC champs are like, yeah, whatever. Like, we've, we've already seen this before. 
Mm. Like his story is over. It's time to move and pass the shine on to Chad, right? And we talked about this before. By passing the title over to Chad, they can move on. Chad now has a built-in feud with Otis, Tozawa, and Maxine. And, yeah. you know, there's a, an actual storyline. Some people are even saying, oh, this uh, entire Alpha Academy storyline is more interesting than the bloodline right now. Wow. You know, So there are fans of this storyline, current storyline. So yeah, you're right. Chad is in a really good spot right now in that he can negotiate. Bro, crazy thought. Uh. Mm. Can you imagine Chad Gable versus Otis with this whole storyline? For the IC Championship? Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly... That is what they should work towards. So yeah. now you... Chad is already a made man and you need to pass that, you know, shine on. Obviously not right away, like, you know. It has to be a few more months of Chad being an absolute dick to his team, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you build up the anticipation of the team turning on Chad. Bro, and Otis has proven that, you know, he can be a star that connects well with the audience. Yep. In 2020, the whole Mandy storyline. Yep. A sympathetic he, baby face. Yes. 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 And he won the money in the bank, but we a lot of people can argue at that point in time he wasn't ready, right? Yeah. But but I think he's ready for at least a mid-cut IC champ run, at least mm. winning it once. I think that yep. would do wonders for his career. So, yeah. so uh, honestly, like, I am very much 100% for Chad Gable winning the IC title um, you know, here. You know what I think? I think the Scottish fans would be cheering like mad I for so Chad winning as well. I think the internet in general is on Chad's side. Like, like the fans, we see that he is perk or peak Gable right now. Yeah. Do you see the Instagram post that he posted out? Uh, apparently, he got uh, like an endorsement or uh, like one coffee company like sent him a couple of his, their coffee to him. Is it? And you know what's the name of the coffee? What? Perk. Coffee. <laughs> I, love I it. swear to God. So he is in on the jokes, guys. Oh, nice, He's nice. In on the jokes. Uh, Div, Div needs to head off, but no worries. Thank you so much for being here. You can catch up on the uh, podcast later. Lah. But she does want to throw it out there that Damien Priest has to retain because he hasn't reached his maximum influence yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll get to that. We'll get to okay, that. Okay, we'll talk about it. You can see our thoughts on this. Yeah? Uh, Take okay. care, bro. Which one of these matches will be the main event, the final match. Is it the hometown hero or is it the I quit match? Do you reckon? Uh, so this is an interesting thing, right? Like, do you put one of these main championship matches op to open the card? Can it be Drew Priest opening the, the card? Cannot be, right? Actually, I can see it. Yeah? I can, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, so it depends on how they're going to book this match, right? Okay, wait, wait. Do you think that the... Order of the match dictates what will happen. Maybe. Because, yeah. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. let's talk about the other one. As much as yeah. we love AJ Styles, and then Cody Rhodes, AJ Styles, you know, he did the whole Mark Henry thing where he teased the retirement, blah, 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 yeah, right? Yeah, that's fun. And that leads to the I quit match. Do we truly believe that AJ Styles is going to be the guy that beats Cody Rhodes? No, we all know that. So uh, it's a very much a foregone conclusion, right? So would you not put that? We know it's going to be a banger of a match. Would you put it in as the very first match then? Maybe this is AJ Styles' way of really going away, la. Like if he were to say I quit, mm. this could be his out for him to like you know disappear and take his break. So this whole storyline about yeah. him wanting to quit the business is not hundred percent real, but mm. it's actually foreshadowing him taking an extended leave of absence from WWE. Probably. But didn't he already just take... I feel like he just came back with his jacked ass body. Yeah, yeah. Because there was an injury, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, he, but he did talk about like, wanting to be with his family, blah, blah, oh. blah. So I think he's going to slow down his career a bit. Lah, because mm. if he were to lose and say, I quit, right? Character-wise, where else is he going to go? TNA, right? bro. TNA. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So a lot of people did uh, speculate that uh, is this whole forbidden door situation can you know if yeah. he's desperate for go could he just go back to TNA and just win the TNA title one more time? <laughs> no la, no la, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, yeah, Cody is definitely gonna win, mm. right? But AJ Styles saying I quit is very very interesting. Yeah. Um, how do we like? Okay, so the I quit stipulation is the stipulation that makes this a very interesting match, right? Like, how do we get around this? How do they get creative with it? Oh, like, yeah. I, or how will they end up saying it? That's the question, yeah. right? Oh, my God. So, that's the thing, right? Like, 
Cody is such a raging baby face. He can take yeah. ten, 10 spears, rock bottom all this. He still won't, he can still kick out. So technically, he will never say, I quit. Like, yeah, it's the John Cena problem. La. John Cena, yeah. I quit is his specialty match because he will never quit. Yeah, no, exactly, right? Uh, no, but this is the thing, and this is what I, I'm a bit confused about this stipulation, right? The yeah. last true I quit match that I truly remember was Rock Mankind. Yeah. And it was the whole thing of, oh, mankind is this guy that will take all the punishment in the world. He'll fall yeah. off a roof and he still won't say I quit. And then yeah. they came out with the most nonsense way. Do you remember th- this one? Yeah, he voice recorded his yeah. I quit, I right? I quit, I quit. Then he played the I quit. Wow, well, that was damn lame. So, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like The I quit stipulation is a very tough one to navigate because, like, yeah, the ramifications of AJ Styles saying I quit like really, ma- really hurts his character. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't see it. So, yeah, how do they book themselves out of this? Or where do they go with this? The only way is he really quit the company. La. <laughs> oh, and disappears for an extended amount of time. Uh, yeah, like you said, she doesn't say, I quit. She says, I'm done. Oh. Ooh, be- you know because I mean? he can't beat Cody? Y- yeah, or maybe he knows that his time is over. La. He can't be a champion anymore. So this uh, is a high drama match. La. Oh, it's cinema. It's going to be cinema, bro. <laughs> All what right. You, what, what are you okay. thinking about? See, see, my thing is, I feel like this this feud, this, this stipulation hasn't been built up enough. I feel mm. like they had one match in France and then Cody went and sidetracked a bit with Logan Paul and then now suddenly, oh, it's I quit. Yeah, so they got to do a lot of work mm. because they only got one more SmackDown left. <laughs> so they can't really yeah. do much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I get Does it feel mean. rushed? I, it feels rushed. The stipulation feels rushed. I know... If this were AEW, they would have had the I Quit match first. La. So at least they got a few <laughs> weeks of build, right? Uh, you know, AEW always book Tombalek one. Uh, freaking blood and guts first match. Okay. Uh, they then they okay. start the feud. But I I don't know. Okay, you know what? I think I wouldn't want Cody and AJ to be the final match. I think this should be like the second last match. Yeah. AJ go say, I quit. It will be a hell of a cliffhanger. Yeah. But then, then they proceed with the Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre match. It's like the feel-good mo- moment. But, 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 but how is it? Okay, so that's the other thing, right? Damien Priest, Drew McIntyre. How is this a feel-good moment? Because the crowd will be 100% behind Drew McIntyre. He yeah is la. the guy. So what, yeah is la. Drew going to win? Is, is that what you're calling for? Drew winning? Yeah, of course I'm calling for Drew to win. Come, okay. When I say it's a feel-good moment, it's a feel-good moment for Drew and the Scottish fans. Okay. No one will care about that. Okay, regardless of heel and face, yeah, Damien Priest is going to be the baby face. Mm. Drew's going to be the heel. But in this scenario, in this environment, it's going to be opposite for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, For right? sure, 100%. Like, you know, they are going to throw out Dominic Mysterio, Finn Bell. Everybody will come and disturb, disturb. Yeah, and Finn is Irish. The Scottish and the Irish don't like each other as well. <laughs> so, so they, there's already, like, they're going to be the heel, de facto heel, no matter what. Dom is going to get booed. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I think it's going to be a pure, like, everyone's cheering for Drew and Drew's going to win. And I know people are going to say like, oh, maybe CM Punk is going to come in and like Disturb. screw up Drew and all that. Yeah. But I think CM Punk is smart. CM Punk going to give Drew this moment, let him savor it and then challenge for the title going to SummerSlam. Is is Punk ready? Is he cleared? Is he ready? I think by SummerSlam he would. Are we? Yeah, because so that is the other thing, right? If Drew were to win now, huh, doesn't Damien Priest's title run look very weak and inconsequential? Because so far, what what great feud has he been in? Didn't he beat... Uh, who did he Jay. beat for? He, he beat Jay. Yeah, he beat Jay, right? In That's Backlash. it. Yeah. Like, like, it feels like we're doing Priest dirty if he drops the title so quickly to Drew McIntyre. But, to your point, Drew is in a hometown and he has the upcoming feud with CM Punk, which is going to be big money. So, I agree that that should be for the title, right? But... Yeah, okay, okay. I, let yeah. me book let me book my way out of this. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me TK my way out of this. Drew beats Jay. Uh Drew beats uh, Damien clean. Mm. CM Punk appears, but CM Punk just stares him down. Maybe after the event, maybe. Yeah. Um but but wh- while CM Punk is like playing mind games, he's not he's taking his time to call his shot. Damien is like pissed, you know, for losing the title. He demands a rematch. There's still gonna be money in the bank, I uh, don't forget. Money in the bank is still happening in July. Oh. So they can have that that so called rematch at Money in the Bank, but then at Money in the Bank, okay, here's my crazy booking. Oh shit! Here we go. The Judgment Day is gonna turn on Damian Priest. Judgment Day is gonna stay heel. Mm. Damian Priest is gonna be the babyface. 
Finn Balor and Damien Priest is going to have a rivalry that that's going to spill over into SummerSlam. And so, then Drew can go and fight CM Punk. But, 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 Priest doesn't have the title anymore. You you still dropped him out. You still yeah. made him a transitional champion. I feel that in this moment, he can afford to take that L because I think Ooh. he needs to sort out the whole judgment situation and then get go for the title again. Bro, be glad that Div is not here. She- <laughs> I waited for the right moment, the moment she left. <laughs> then I say these things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mm, I don't know. I, I see where you're going with it because, you know, the whole Drew thing definitely yeah. is the bigger money draw. But yeah, I feel like we're doing Priest real dirty here by having him do you like, so fast. Do you like Priest as champion? Though? That's my question. It feels forgettable. No, no, to your point, it feels forgettable. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, he just needs one or two more feuds to get it really going. Yeah. And so, uh, to your point, he's not ready yet. What? This, to me, this championship run is a test run for him mm. in the main event scene. It's not the real one. So, okay, with Drew, not, not, now Drew is still doing his trolling stuff like on social media, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Wouldn't it make more sense to have CM Punk cost Drew this shot? N- no, because I feel like CM Punk has done that already. He already mm. had the satisfaction of, you know, screwing with Drew. Yeah. I think he, what CM Punk really, really wants is to beat Drew fair and square and beat and get the title from him. I think mm. that's what, what CM, CM Punk's character would want that. Right, right. Yeah, like let him enjoy this moment in... Mm. Because you see, uh, if CM Punk calls the title in Scotland, right? Yeah. He's going to be the biggest shield ever. <laughs> in, well, in Scotland? Yeah, in Scotland, yes. He'll get booed but, for sure, yeah. He'll get booed like crazy, right? But I, I feel WWE is smart and he knows that okay, that's going to happen. Let him have that Stay down after mm. the match. After, right, right. And then, yeah, people will freak out about that. What if Drew screws himself? They are going again. on this whole... Yeah, yeah, again, right? Like, they're going on this whole angle where Drew, you know, um, is going to cost himself the match because he gets distracted because of CM Punk, whatever. Like, I don't know, CM Punk, special guest commentator again, no? Do you or- think Drew and Punk needs a title? No, actually, I don't think they need the title. That's why, Mm -hmm. you know, but then, like, to your point, if CM Punk somehow cost Drew the title here, he will get booed. So do they want this scene of CM Punk getting booed? I don't think they do, right? Yeah. And going back to the placement of the match, I feel like if this kicks off the show, that means Damien Priest is going to win. And then, Mm. so you have the Cody Rhodes winning at the end, and that's a big triumphant go-home happy moment. Because remember the last time, Drew versus Roman Reigns and they oh, had to get so Tyson bad. Fury in the ring to sing karaoke. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> that was so bad. Uh, and then they even they didn't even sing a Scottish song. They sing in a... Don't made know. Made in uh, America. Made in America. Yeah. They sing an American song. It's so dumb. It was so weird. Um, yeah. yeah it, it's going to be an interesting... I don't know how they booked themselves out of this, but I'm excited to watch it. Like, yeah. I am quite like hype for this Bro, my hype level for this is way more than the Saudi Arabia show, <laughs> even the backlash. Because backlash, we didn't know what to expect. Mm. And then the, the French fans came through, right? But yeah. I think this event, oh, the 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 match card has got me hyped. Yeah, there, there are definitely some very interesting... Okay, to me, the, the matches that really stand out huh, are all the men, unfortunately. The women, uh, we know the booking. We know it's quite obvious, yeah, right? Yeah. But, but I want but, Chad to win. I want to see how Cody and AJ uh, pull off a great match. And this Drew and Priest is going to be an interesting one. But conspicuous by the absence, bro. Mm. The bloodline. Ha. The bloodline is technically not on the card. Yeah. But do you think their presence will be felt? Will they do any bloodline-related uh, angle on the show? With Cody? As in uh, they try to screw Cody? But you see, here's the problem with the bloodline, right? They are now more involved with Kevin Owens and... You know that group, so they've like yeah. they haven't really messed with Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I I know. So it's it's very interesting. We don't know because like that, if they're not involved with Cody, then they're not in the main event. So yeah. it's like they're in their own universe doing something. Mm. Uh, so you know what? It, to me, <laughs> and it's weird, right? Trying to compare this to uh, other TV shows, but it's like you know, season one of a show is uh, centered around these two characters, yeah. and then maybe two seasons later they focus on these two main other new main characters. I feel mm. like that's what's happening here. So I now this current mean. version of the bloodline, yeah, they're still there. But they're not. I mean, it's solo, you know? We're not saying yeah. he's bad, but he's not Roman Reigns. 
Yeah. My the thing that I'm worried or not worried lah. The, to me that what's a missed opportunity is they didn't run back Gunter versus Randy Orton. Like that. Oh yeah. They didn't follow up on the fact that you know there was a screwy finish. Mm. So from there, I think it's clear that. It was a botch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. it was. It was a botch, unfortunately. So they're um, gonna just sort of slide it under the carpet and go. Oh, nothing e- happened. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but again, can you imagine Gunter in Scotland? Wow, why didn't they, eh, why didn't they do a match for Gunter there, man? What well, waste. I mean, Gunter is like this European only lah. It's not like he's from Scotland. He's he's Austrian. Eh, technically, isn't Scotland part of? It's called a part of the UK. Sorry, my English. Yes. Uh, my British. So that means they are not in the EU lah. They are... Huh? But the UK is out of the EU. Right? Yeah lah. Brexit. I thought it's only England out of EU. Or is it all of the UK, British? No, to be honest, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but, I don't follow their politics. <laughs> but, but yeah. If, if anything, I don't know. Maybe he would get booed. Uh, whatever. The, the, the point is, we have a nice five match card. Remember, this is not AEW. They don't need to like make this a four, five hour pay-per-view. It's yeah. A, it's going to be a nice... Good watch for us. Three hours and we are we're done. Yeah, and and for us, our podcast is two hours, and we Woo! will try, we will try to be done as well. <laughs> and, and we will be done. So, uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, let us know how hyped you are for Clash at the Castle. And once again, if you are going to be up watching, come watch it with me. I'll be doing a watch along on my Twitch channel, Mister Young GG. Awesome, awesome. And of course, guys, if you guys love what we do, please continue supporting us on Patreon. Mm. You want to guys gonna get some mugs and some merch, please join us on our championship tier. Yep. And of course, of course, please support our sponsors as well, yeah? Absolutely. First of all, our sponsor, Mirage Advisory. Drop yeah. them a follow on their Instagram page. Lovely folk who love wrestling and who love supporting what we do as far as wrestling is concerned. But also, our new sponsor... Well, not really new lah, returning, I suppose. Lemak! Yeah. yeah, man, Lema is back. They are back and fully on board. Please support them, not just on their socials, whether it's on Instagram or TikTok. Mm. But hey, they have an official pop-up store, permanent pop-up store at Arab Street. I believe, did they put it on their Instagram, like where exactly in Arab Street? Uh, I Oh, there we go. My Kampung Village at 110 Arab Street. There yeah, you go. This is the one yeah. right here. Correct, correct. So it's pretty near the Sultan Mosque. Okay, everyone mm. knows the area, lah, Kampung mm. Glam area. So if you're for any chance walking by there, chilling there, getting, you know, like dinner or what, having dinner plans, go drop by Lema and say hi to them. Say that, you know, Kit Regat send, send them mm. and they'll be very, very happy to, you know, let you guys try their jongkong. Their jongkong is so oh. amazing. And as well as their other, you know, Indonesian dishes as well. Bro, this is making me so hungry. I haven't even had my lunch yet. So I need but to go and settle something. Maybe I go and look for them. I'm going to drive to Arab Street right now. Yeah, man. Hey, <laughs> not just if you if you don't want to drive, you want them to order over to your place. Also, can okay, no problem. You can That's take care correct. of that. So, hey, they got at Anchor Point, Clark Key, uh, Bedok North also. Yeah, Bedok North is their main store. Ah, I think their main hawker store. I see. But I believe uh, the rest are all like pop up, pop-ups. temporary pop up stores. Yeah, yeah. Just follow their social media to stay up to date, lah. As to where they are, very simple, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I shout out to you guys because I I know a lot, a, a couple of you have like you know sent inquiries like hey you know uh I want to know learn more is Lemak in the West Side. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, not yet. But hey, I think going to Boogies is a really a huge step as well. So yes, you know, in the center of Singapore. So come over, go go check out some Lemak. Absolutely. Uh, in the meantime, once again, thank you so much for watching the podcast. As always, follow us on our other socials. All links are in the description. And we'll be back very soon for a mm. uh, review of WWE Clash at the Castle. Of course, the next episode, we might have some guests. You never know. And there are so many local wrestling events that are happening really soon. The Dual Destinies later yeah, on yeah. this month also from Grapple yeah, Max. Yes. I believe uh, next week, Monday, is a Hari Raya Haji. Yes. Uh, so we do not know whether we want to do the podcast live on that day since mm-hmm. most people are going to be at home so we'll, yep. we'll we'll let you guys know on our socials as well so keep to date on our next episode's uh, release date yeah absolutely in the meantime as always it's Mr. Young and it's foreign in the building